100% into compliance. Our democracy depends on it. We're an organization called Citizens Against Too Much Unfettered Freedom, or CATMUF. CATMUF is a bipartisan flock of sheep whose goal is expanding government until nothing else remains. Because the government is here to help you. How can you help CATMUF help you? By only voting for candidates dedicated to expanding government. It's easy. You don't need to study the issues. No matter what a politician says when running for office, they're all dedicated to expanding government. And make sure you tell all your friends and family to vote for more government. Here at CATMUF, we don't care if you vote Democrat or Republican, as long as you vote for candidates committed to growing our federal family. CATMUF, because folks just aren't smart enough to handle real freedom. This is Free Talk Live. You can take control by dialing in toll-free. Our number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. That number is brought to you by ProXPN. Joining you in the studio tonight, you've got Ian. Johnny Ray. And Mark. And don't forget, join us online at freetalklive.com. Create the content there on the front page of the website. Everything you see has been placed there by listeners like you. You just submit whatever you want to the site. Maybe it's a news article or a blog post, YouTube video, something fun, whatever you like, uh, whatever you think will appreciate. Then you can submit it there and other listeners can vote it up or vote it down. And then we'll know what you think is interesting. So go to freetalklive.com to get interactive there. Coming up, it is election night. And of course, as always, some people are saying, it's the most important election of our lifetime, which, of course, that's what they always say. Uh, we can get into a little bit more about uh, that, specifically an excellent article over at lewrockwell.com about rulers seeking to rule, sociopathic politicians. We'll get into that a little bit, plus your calls and thoughts. Johnny Ray's here with the Game of the Week for this week. That's on the way tonight. You can also bring up anything you want, like AC will do in Ohio AC, you're on Free Talk Live with Ian, Johnny Ray, and Mark. Yeah, before I get to my topic, I just want to let uh, listeners know, um, make sure you type in, when you're typing the, uh, when you're dialing the number, to dial 1-8-1-8-5-5, not 1-800, because apparently that leads to a sex line. Yeah, that's, uh, we've, we've been told that nice. before, that apparently uh, 1-800-855-450. Uh, Free. Free. Yeah. One, no, it's 800-450 free does lead to some kind of... Uh, Have you tried it yet, Mark? No, no, I had never considered it. So, uh, AC, thanks for the heads up on that. What else uh, did you want to share? Well, um, over the last couple months, you guys have been talking about the uh, the ISIS guys beheading people. And, of course, and there's been a lot of interesting discussion about it. And, of course, our mutual uh, friend, uh, James, the uh, Christian... Pharisee has been called in a few times and complained about well, complained about well, I can't think of any Christians that have beheaded people. And I actually mm. found a story that just recently happened. I posted up on your guys' Facebook page if you want to look at it, um, of a Christian who beheaded a college who was a college student. This Christian was a college student who beheaded one of his uh, fellow college students for practicing witchcraft. Yikes. And this is a relatively new story. I actually saw that. I don't know if I saw it on the Facebook page. I think I did, actually. Uh, so thanks for posting it up there. Of course, another thing you can do is always post it right to the front page of freetalklive.com. What are your uh, thoughts on this? The story I see here says it was a near beheading. I don't know how much of one's oh, yeah, yeah, uh, neck yeah. still needs to be attached in order for it to be considered a beheading. Yuck. I guess it could still be a near beheading if there was a small amount of uh, skin uh, still attached. But uh, your thoughts, AC? Well, I just thought, I mean, it's a, a very disturbing story, and obviously, um, and the thing is, I wanted to bring up, it's not like um, the uh, it's not like the Bible doesn't endorse that, because it does. Um, what do you think this means, though? So, so there's a crazy guy who uh, claims to be a Christian that's cut somebody's head off. What does that mean to you? I mean, there's a lot of nutty people out there who obviously, uh, obviously follow their religion way too seriously. Well, I think it's I think it's relevant to point this out because there have been there has been an instance within the last few months of uh, someone claiming to be a Muslim uh, cutting a coworker's head off. I believe that was the Oklahoma story from a few weeks back, and it was around that time where we found another story about someone uh, being beheaded. But this is an even more uh, more recent one. 
uh, of someone who was supposedly a Christian who beheaded someone or nearly beheaded someone. And just, I think you're right, AC, it does show that crazy is a stripe that rolls through lots of different religions. Uh, some people in any given religion may be crazy enough to kill another human being and and or do so in a very, very graphic, uh, disgusting manner. Not that you know, not that killing someone at, at all is not disgusting, but certainly a beheading is an unusual method. With ISIS, it's a sy systematic, um, you know, beheading, and and as I understand it, they're actually forcing school kids to watch beheadings for some reason. Wow, um, I haven't heard that one yet. So, and but to me, it's uh, that sounds you know, like a, an unconfirmed rumor. Have you? Uh, is I heard it on the news. On what do you want from me? I okay. mean, you know. But is it true? I don't know. As true either. as anything else you hear on the news. I read that somewhere, but I can't remember where. Here's one thing I'm certain of is the United States is dropping bombs out of remote control airplanes, and no one cares about that. That mm. somehow it's uh, it's easier to vilify a group because they're systematically cutting people's heads off. But if they're systematically blowing people up with remote control airplanes, you don't say anything about it. Dead is dead, and it doesn't really matter how you did it. AC, thanks for the call tonight, man. Appreciate the heads up on the story. Also... Um, I would say that uh, this this Christian man who nearly beheaded somebody, uh, AC said that people take their religion way too seriously. I think that it's it, it wasn't reverence for God or uh, or or an attaining after the mysterious that is what made this Christian person kill his fellow man. I think there was some kind of evil inside him to begin with, and then. The, his religion had little to do with it. And I think the same can be said for well, ISIS. They're, uh, I they're, don't know, Johnny Ray. Let me give you the story here before you continue speculating. I mean, have you read sure, the story no, about the new beheading? Here's the story from KFOR.com, News Channel 4. Uh, Stillwater, Oklahoma, 21-year-old Stillwater man has been charged with first-degree murder in connection to the death of an area college student who, according to police, was nearly decapitated. Isaiah Soar Martin, age 21, is accused of using a long knife or sword to kill 19-year-old Jacob Andrew Crockett in an apartment uh, in the 400 block of wherever. S police say the two men were acquaintances, and Crockett was attending a class at Northern Co Oklahoma College but was planning to transfer to OSU. On Wednesday afternoon, officers said they received a 911 call from Marin saying he had just killed someone. According to an arrest affidavit, Marin told police, "I quote, I murdered someone. And according to the affidavit, he began, quote, rambling about sacrificing and magic, unquote. Officers found him walking along State Highway 51 in western Stillwater covered in blood and carrying a knife. Court records show that after police approached Marin, he said, quote, I hacked them to death with a machete, unquote. Captain Randy Dickerson said that Marin then confessed to killing Crockett. Using that weapon, he says they followed information given to them by him, which led them to the apartment where the victim was found. At this point, the uh, motive for the murder is unclear. However, Marin admitted to fantasizing about killing four or five people. As of now, the officer in the case says the case is not related to recent beheadings by Islamic extremists, and so the case has no religious implications. At a news conference on Thursday, they confirmed that Crockett is the son of an Oklahoma Highway Patrol trooper, Crockett being the victim uh, in this case. However, police say there is no connection linking the family's situation or the motive for murder. Crockett's brother told uh, police Marin is a heavy drug user and religious zealot. So this is the, the alleged murderer here, the admitted murderer, a supposed religious zealot. Marin's brother told police that he and Isaiah were playing a card game and the victim was in the room with them. The report says Samuel stated that Isaiah had been watching YouTube videos related to his Christian beliefs. And again, Isaiah as the, uh, the alleged murderer here. During the card game, the affidavit claims he picked up a large black sword and began swinging it. Stated that he heard a noise described as the sound of someone getting stabbed. He looked up and saw Jacob stand up and blood gushing from his chest. Ugh. Samuel told police Isaiah was still holding the knife. At that point, he ran from the apartment. Isaiah followed him, trying to calm him down and uh, would explain why he killed Jacob from letters that he will be writing while he is in prison. Samuel told police Crockett and Isaiah had disagreements in the past. He said that he and his brother, uh, excuse me, Jacob Crockett and his brother Jesse were, quote, practicing witchcraft, and Isaiah had strong Christian beliefs. So we don't yet have a statement from the murderer here as to why the crime was committed, but there apparently is some evidence that as a devout Christian, he was upset by the witchcraft. No, as a nut, 
he was upset because he was, you know, the world was messed up. So this guy could have been nutty if his religion had been Buddhist or whether it had been uh, Hindu or whether it had been Muslim or whether it had been Christian. There's, that's certainly true, but it could be argued that a Buddhist would be less likely to engage in this sort of behavior. You don't know anything about Buddhists other than what you've read. The fact is that Buddhists are running down the streets of... Is it Indonesia right now? Killing people. Is that right? So, yeah. Put all that crap that you've heard about Buddhists aside. Um, what you've read about Buddhists is entirely different than what Buddhists do. In the same way that what you read about Muslims is different than Muslims and what you read about Christians mm. is different than Christians. Everybody's got their own relationship with God and nutty people have a nutty relationship with whatever they think is God. Toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. I guess I just don't hear Buddhists trashing on other religions very often. You don't uh, live where Buddhists live. We're coming up. Free Talk Live. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. Are you searching for your soulmate? Someone you can trust, who will never betray you, or cooperate with the NSA? Stop searching. With EasyDNS, you found a keeper. EasyDNS does it all. Domain names, web hosting, and managed WordPress hosting. EasyDNS stands up for your internet freedom. And with servers in Canada, they do not cooperate with the NSA. Go to EasyDNS.com. You'll love their services or get a full refund. They guarantee it. And they accept Bitcoin. That's EasyDNS.com. Hi, this is Mark Edge, host of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the very economic engine that powers this country. With a printing press tethered to Washington politicians, bureaucrats, and central bankers, how can we put our trust in paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Come see gold.freetalklive.com or call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold. With Washington, D.C. delivering more debt and printed promises, common sense tells us the future of the trend is obvious. Everyone listening should visit gold.freetalklive.com or call 877-357-9938. I trust Midas Resources for my gold, silver, platinum, and you can too. Again, I want you to have this book, and it's free. It's gold.freetalklive.com or 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at GunsAndWeed.com or on Amazon. That's GunsAndWeed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's GunsAndWeed.com. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges. 
This is Davi Barker from ShinyBadges.com, and I just want to personally apologize for airing a jingle week after week, month after month, that turned out to be such an infectious brain worm. So to make it up to you, I'm offering a free gift. The next time you make a purchase at ShinyBadges.com, write WORMS in the transaction comments, and I'll send you something weird. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can dial in toll-free here at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Uh, more coming up here, or some coming up here, about the election, uh, specifically the sociopathic nut jobs that you may have voted for today. We'll uh, talk a little bit more about that. Your calls and no, comments. No, not the ones I voted for. Are welcome. Also, you may Skype into the show. Our username there is lrn.fm. We continue with your calls, but first want to tell you how to get a pound of some of the best coffee out there for free right to your door. Coffee.freetalklive.com. That's as easy as that. You go there, you sign up for the subscription. You can cancel it at any time. There's no requirements other than you sign up for the subscription. You can get your free pound of coffee. Take it and go. It's delicious, 100% organic, top 1% greater Abaca beans, shade grown. Now, obviously, our expectation is that some people will love this coffee just like you. It's probably among the best coffee you'll taste in your lifetime. And But... What you really need to know about BuzzBox Coffee is that they give us the opportunity by sending us back some of the proceeds that we're able to support people through Kiva.org around the world with microloans. Microloans that give people a hand up out of poverty, not a hand out. You know, the whole teach a man to fish thing, um, they're, we're giving them fishing poles. And we've helped, I, I don't know, just a, a, a great deal of people at this point. And we'd love to keep on helping them. And we can with when people like you go and sign up for the subscription and keep getting your coffee. It makes it easy. You get your coffee delivered right to your door. You never have to think about it again. It's a lot better than the coffee you buy at the grocery store. Again, coffee.freetalklive.com. All right, so let's go to your calls and thoughts. Glenn is on the line in Philly. You're on Free Talk Live. Hello, Glenn. Hello, guys. Hey. Uh, yeah, I was thinking, thinking about this uh, whole humans killing humans thing. Um, I always like to point out that during the 20th century, uh, more humans were killed by card-carrying atheists in the form of Stalinists and Maoists and that sort of thing than by any religious group, you know, than any religion could have ever hoped to do. <clears throat> so, you know, so let's but the, not forget. That's, the, it, that's it, just this 20, that, that's just this century, right? Like if you, if you line up the that's religions over the last century. 20 centuries, atheists um, win one out of 20. <laughs> well, yes, but they made, they made up for a lot of lost time because probably if you combined all those people, there weren't that many people on the earth in, in ancient times. The world didn't have one billion people on it until 1800. That might be and true, then, uh, but as a percentage of the population, it's my understanding that 20th century was the least violent century in the course of man, is what is conjectured by historians. And I have to see some statistical analysis there. It's kind of hard to believe when you know that people are buying by, dying by the tens of the millions at the hands of political ideologues. There were tens of millions. And, you know, <laughs> There were just yeah. weren't tens of millions yeah, before. Totally. Yeah, exactly. Um, but anyway, um, now in terms of Christianity, here's here's another problem I have. Certainly, crazy people who could cop to being a Christian or a Jew or a Muslim or a Hindu or something, people can go nuts. Uh, I discount statistically. I discount nut cases. So there are obviously nut cases. But the, um, the certainly the Christian scriptures, the New Testament, doesn't advocate violence. And the one incident you see in the Gospels where um, Peter lopped off uh, the ear of a slave, Jesus picks up the guy's ear and puts it back on. So we see, you know, not only does Jesus not sanction the violence, he repairs the damage one of his followers did. Um, so you can't, it's not in the scriptures. Now, certainly Christian organizations claiming to be Christian have perpetrated you know, killing, and that's certainly wrong. You yeah. Know, uh, up until about behind all kinds of ideologies. Yeah. Up until about the uh, the tenth century, the church was against war entirely. Um, I mean, uh, right. when you when you look at the first saint, Saint Martin of Tours, he was a Roman soldier who stopped being a soldier in order to be a Christian. Um, and right. this is you know this is how Christianity viewed violence up until that point. 
the merging of Christianity with uh, essentially the you know the, the Germanic tribes and, and that sort of thing. Once the Germanic tribes merged in, they had these uh, these you know more violent religions where you know hey the the really right. good guys good at killing get to go to Valhalla and these it, it kind of merged into Christianity right. and turned it into well, what it is today. That's called, that merging is called syncretism. That's that's why yep. it's yeah, it's, a, it's an ancient you know they, this is what was always fought. In the Old Testament, with the prophets, where people start, you know, allowing doctrinal adultery, you know, ad- 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 adulteration of the doctrine and embracing other religions. That's why God's always saying, "Come out of Babylon! Don't do what they do!" Blah blah blah. You know. So yeah, she always had this, this mixing and mingling uh, that, that pollutes things. So that's a mess. So, uh, but however, I can tell you for sure that if you now, so you're not going to find the violence in the New Testament. But if you read the eighth and ninth stories of the Quran, oh, you'll certainly find it there. You know? What are you referring to? And, you read, uh, you read I've the, read the, the entire Quran, too. So to what uh, specifically? In, 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 well, in the, well, in the ninth surah, you certainly see you see the the forbidding of 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 Muslims to be conciliatory. Any Muslim who is not consenting and uh, enthusiastically participating in jihad is to be considered an infidel and killed. That's well, define what you mean by jihad. Well, define it's, what you mean by jihad. Look, it, you know, Islam is basically, uh, you know, a pirate religion without a ship. I mean, what is that supposed to mean? A, no, no, it means the Muhammad was basically a dastardly pirate who attacked uh, civilian populations. Never once fought a military battle. He, well, I don't know about was, that. I, I'm not was, sure if that's, there's any well, accuracy to that statement. Muhammad, yeah. Well, you know, find me a military. Find me one historical instance where Muhammad. Well, he was on the defensive and fought a military battle. Uh, there's plenty of examples in the in the history that I've seen. Thanks for the call, Glenn. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. I just don't understand, you know, that uh, that ridiculous interpretation of uh, the Muslim religion because my understanding is that uh, what He was ha- on the defense the whole time. That's what uh, right. we've been told by— uh, Muslims that call in the show. Right. He, Muhammad and his followers were doing something that was pretty new uh, back then. They, you know, were kind of, they, they existed in a time where there were a lot of uh, sort of idolatrous religions and they had uh, had broken away from that. Uh, they, you know, gave women more rights than they'd ever had previously, respected more uh, rights than they'd had previously. And they were attacked uh, by various different groups, from my understanding. And there was a time when uh, when they were under attack, that Muhammad, you know, instructed his followers to not retaliate against the attackers once they were once the attackers were to cease their attack. If the attackers were attacking, uh, the Muslims were allowed to defend themselves. But if the attackers left, then they weren't supposed to pursue them. And so it seemed to me like it was a very defensive oriented uh, religion rather than an oppressive, aggressive well, one. We had Will Coley from Muslims for Liberty on for an entire Saturday show, and he fielded questions just like this over yeah. the course of three hours. And he, it seemed to me, now look, I'm not a Muslim. I have no intention of ever being a Muslim, but it seemed what what I'm getting is, is a bunch of Christians who probably don't know that much about Islam have yeah. read a little bit about somebody who hates Islam and then internalize that because it, it, it fits with their worldview. I mean, the, the, like, I just want to hear about what people who don't believe in any religion think about Islam that have been uh, studied, not people, you know, oh, my team's better than your team, because that's just boring to me. Yeah, I mean, the greatest jihad is the one that you have inside yourself. I mean, that's very clear teaching by the Muslim religion, and I don't think that people really even understand what jihad means. That's why I asked the caller there, Glenn, you know, what, what do you mean by jihad? Oh, if you don't join the jihad, then you're a bad Muslim. Well, yeah, you're supposed to have a jihad going on inside yourself, and obviously you're welcome to defend yourself from physical attack and reality. But jihad is more, to me, about a personal journey, a spiritual journey. 855-450-FREE. You can share your thoughts here on Free Talk Live. There's more coming up. With autumn in the air, it's time to think about getting ready for winter. And it's time to save at HerbalHealer.com. You'll find amazing seasonal savings to prepare you for the fight against cold and flu season. Like Oregacillin to promote lung health. 30 capsules regularly $34.95, now only $25. 
HHA Olive Leaf, the natural antiviral, normally $16.95 now. 60 capsules are just $12. HHA Elderberry Power, a great flu and virus fighter, regularly $16.95. 60 capsules, now $10. Save on all our homeopathic detoxes. Choose from lungs, kidney, liver, brain, libido, or whole body, normally $26.95, now just $20. Visit HerbalHealer.com and click on the Fall Winter Specials button to save on all our natural cold and flu-fighting products. Also explore our Herbal Healer Academy correspondence courses that teach you how to handle your health naturally. HerbalHealer.com, healing the world with nature, one person at a time, since 1988. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here. And I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at FreeRoss.org. That's FreeRoss.org. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's post pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. I've been told no in many different ways. I give you an order and you're going to obey it. Who told you to go this way? You can't do that and you have to leave here. You cannot bring signs into the rally. Walk with me. Well, I'm, I'm, no, I'm comfortable me. here, actually. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, 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 hey. Who do you think you Excuse are? me. There is no video or audio allowed in this No, I have work today. This is you ain't going to make it. Wait, no. now. Wait a minute. Hey! Oh my god! Unbelievable! Why are you running from me? Because you're scared me! What am I being detained for? You're being served. What is this? You're being served. What is this? Bureaucrats have a funny way of telling people no. That's the sound of the men working on the chain. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. You can put the Liberty Radio Network on the air in your area. Visit broadcast.lrn.fm to learn how. Broadcast.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can dial in toll free here at 855 450 free. Last night we talked about. Being an asexual, there was an article the Huffington Post had uh, written by a lady who, I don't know, maybe she's in her 30s. I just, I'm, I'm judging by the picture on uh, one of the articles. And she's talking about what life is like for her as an asexual. And the way she described it was a really frustrating one that uh, she's like, she sees sex everywhere and it really bothers her. On the show, we, we really couldn't understand why it was such a big deal. Uh, because, you know, like, I don't really much care for, you know, sports, but I don't let it get to me that a bunch of people enjoy sports. That's their preference. It's something they're into. 
it doesn't bother me. So I had some some questions about being an asexual, which obviously couldn't be answered by an article. So we gave the invitation. Hey, if you're an asexual, we'd love to hear from you. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE, and we're going to do that because I believe we have one on the line. But I also want to tell you about how to protect your privacy online via ProXPN. You've got to take steps to protect your privacy. You can't just expect that other companies are going to respect it. You've got to find the right uh, companies to work with that can help you protect yourself. And ProXPN is one of those folks uh, that can do that. You can go to ProXPN.com slash FTL and get a sweet discount. I'll tell you about that in a moment. But what they do is they encrypt your internet connection, meaning your internet service provider will no longer be able to save your surfing history, save all the searches that you put into Google or whatever search engine that you use. Maybe your current ISP is saving that information and keeping it for up to five years. Now, ProXPN isn't an inter internet service provider. You can use ProXPN on any internet connection on just about any device. You can download it for Windows, Macintosh, iOS devices, Android devices as well. Plus, if you're a Linux user, setup's a little bit different, but you can get it working for Linux as well, and it's actually pretty easy. Go to proxpn.com slash FTL to get started. When you're ready to upgrade to their premium account, you'll get unlimited bandwidth, servers around the world that you can access. You can privately torrent with ProXPN, plus get past regionally blocked websites. ProXPN also doesn't keep records of your online habits at all. And you get it all with a risk-free seven-day money-back guarantee. Just go to proxpn.com slash FTL. And we're, when you're ready to upgrade to premium, use our discount codes, which are FTL50. That gives you 50% off the life, uh, for the lifetime of your account. That's on the annual account price. Or use code FTLBTC, and you'll save 62% on that annual account, and you'll have to pay with Bitcoin in that case. So you can save big with code FTL50 or FTLBTC at proxpn.com slash FTL and get a great discount on privacy that is priceless. Let's go to Julia calling from California in the high desert. You're on via Skype. Hello, Julia. Hi. Hey, uh, so you are a, a, apparently an asexual. Yep. How long have you been an asexual? Is this something you were born with? Yeah. And so when did you realize, Julia, that uh, that this was something that set you apart from other people? Uh, I found I always kind of knew I was different because I never had crushes on people. So it's really... Uh, go ahead. Oh, oh and then I kind of just Googled it and like Googled not attracted to either gender, found asexuality.org. And I read the frequently asked questions and forums, and I realized I was asexual. So um, when you say you're not attracted, the article that we were reading last night, the author there had a different piece where she does claim to be attracted to other people, but she's just not interested in sex. So it's interesting kind of the range of, I mean, even within asexuality, which is apparently about 1% of the, um, at least the U.S. population, at least within the, the just that one percent, there's also appears to be a range. Some people are attracted to members of the opposite sex, some the same sex, others not attracted at all in any way, shape, or form. So, you when you're walking around in public, you know, like if I'm walking at a, at a, you know in a public place, I can find people as I walk by that I I find that they're attractive. That doesn't happen for you. No, I do get aesthetic attraction, which is attraction to someone's appearance without it being romantic or sexual. Okay, well, that's, Interesting. What, that's what I would consider to be an attraction. Like, you know, oh, that's, yep. that person's pretty. For me, know, that that's, that's linked. For you, that's not linked? No. So that would be kind of like me say it, seeing a good-looking guy in, um, in, in a good suit or whatever. And that's saying, how I was going to put it. Yeah, that's that's a good-looking guy, but, you know, that's He's it. handsome. That's it for me. Mm -hmm. You can acknowledge it. So you can acknowledge... Uh, then, Julia, that some people are physically attractive in that you can appreciate their appearance, yes. but uh, obviously there's no desire for sexual activity or a romantic relationship. So would you call this a blessing or a curse? Uh, I, I like it. What do you like about it? Just less to worry about. Meaning, like, you don't have to deal with the ups and downs, lots of downs in some cases, of romantic relationships. It's less of a burden on your own personal life. Yeah. So, do you live at home or do you live, do you have, like, a roommate situation? Or do you live on your own? I live at home. Okay. 
with with parents. How old yeah, are you? I gotta say, if I didn't have any sexual attraction to people, I probably would live there till now. How how old are you, <laughs> if I might ask? Eighteen. Okay, oh, so well, yeah, no no place for you to go. It's an expected thing at that age. Now, another question I had was, uh, you know, what about snuggling? I mean, as uh, as somebody, I appreciate intimacy of all sorts, and so I enjoy a good snuggle. Um, is that true for an asexual? Um, they're all different. Some asexuals may like snuggling, some won't. Did you say some? Oh, some asexuals may like it. What about yeah. you? What's your uh, What's your personal view on that? Do you desire contact with other humans, just not sexual contact? No, I don't really want contact with people. Okay, so then, so becoming like a professional snuggler for you would not be an option. That would be a very uncomfortable. So contact is uh, is contact with other humans something you just you're not interested in, or something that's like physically repulsive to you? No, it's not repulsive. I just don't really like it. Julia, would you say that your family life, your family structure was normal and traditional? Did you have a two-parent household? Did w- Would you describe your both of your parents as having you, love for you and happiness as some of their most important things? Yeah, my parents divorced when I was seven, but I had a normal childhood. I got hugged and loved. Okay, that's good to know. So, no, uh... uh molestation or anything like that nope okay were you um, i bet you get asked that question a lot do, yeah do you, you share that info yeah. do you find julia that you are bothered uh like that author of the article the article we read seemed really jaded this person was upset that they had to walk through uh you know they see it on tv they see sex plot lines on sitcoms or about people having sex with other people uh that they would walk through the grocery store line and they'd see a cosmo magazine and sex is there on the cover the person who wrote that article seemed to be really jaded and uh, and cynical does that apply to you does it bother you to see sex being so popular in culture no it doesn't like i watch hbo shows and all make sex jokes it just doesn't bother me have you ever tried to have uh, to go out on dates uh, just to see if you could find somebody that uh, had a meaningful connection no interesting so do you think that you'll do you have people that are trying to take you out on dates and how do you respond to that i have before and i just turn them down <laughs> it's fascinating yeah I, they're not uh, uh you know i mean you must have male friends and at some point or another they're gonna you know Generally, what happens is they're going to try to ask you out and maybe be persistent. Do you have no nobody has been tried to be particularly persistent? Nope. Hmm, okay. Do you find that you as, must be good at turning them down? Do you find that as an asexual uh, who you did say that you could you could appreciate physical attractiveness? Do you find yourself attracted more to males or females? I think uh, males are more aesthetically attractive than females, but. Well, I'm about out of questions. Any other uh, guys for Julia while we uh, while we have her? Here? It's fascinating. Yeah, I got to say, I appreciate you taking the time to call in tonight, Julia. Was, were you able to connect physically with any other asexuals in your area through your internet uh, goings on? No, there's a an asexuality subreddit on Reddit that I'm on. Cool. Well, I appreciate your time tonight, and I wish you the best. Thanks for listening to Free Talk Live, and thanks for the call here tonight. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. And maybe you're an asexual with kind of a different view on things. You're certainly welcome to share your experiences in life, uh, and you can also take control and bring up anything you want. Coming up, sociopaths. They're running for office today. We'll talk more about them here in moments. It's Free Talk Live. Here's a good idea. When you have a legal matter like creating your will or legally setting up a business with a corporation or LLC, you don't necessarily need a law firm. Use LegalZoom.com. At LegalZoom.com, you answer straightforward questions online, and they take care of the rest. They even review your answers for common mistakes and guarantee your satisfaction. Free Talk Live listeners, you'll get 10% off your order by typing in FTL in the referral box at purchase. Don't procrastinate with these important legal documents. LegalZoom.com. Majid lives in Nordavin, Armenia, with his wife, kids, and grandkids, all in the same house. They have cows, but to compete against the big ranchers, Majid needed to get a loan for more cattle. Free Talk Live helped him get a loan for the cows. He bought them, and now he's very happy with the expansion of his farm. You can help us help more people by getting your coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com. Make a difference, one cup at a time. Get a free pound to try out the subscription. Cancel at any time. coffee.freetalklive.com. 
The experts at Web.com want to build your business a successful website for free, just like we did for these current Web.com customers. We've used and, and looked at other website designers, but there's nobody better than Web.com. Web.com can build your website in as little as seven days free. Plus, we'll promote it on all the major search engines like Google, Yahoo, and Bing. If after 30 days you're happy, we'll continue to provide promotion, hosting, support, and maintenance, all for one low monthly fee. If not, cancel and pay nothing. If you're in business today and you don't have a web presence, you won't be taken seriously. Call right now and you'll also get a free .com or .net domain name for your new website powered by VeriSign, the world's leading domain name provider. Call 800-297-0154. That's 800-297-0154. No upfront charge for site build, after which ongoing fees apply. Rights to site are relinquished when canceled. Domain included during active service, after which fees apply. That's 800-297-0154. Does this ever happen to you? Moments after you're introduced to someone, you forget his or her name. It's a common faux pas you'll want to avoid, especially if you're a job seeker. And even if you're not, here's a tip. As you are being introduced, and while you're still shaking hands, smiling, and making eye contact, say the person's name aloud. Not only does that make a deposit in your memory bank, it acknowledges the other person. And that is more than a nuance, as is maintaining eye contact. With money and attention so scarce now, effective communication skills have never been more important. Cutting through the clutter, rather than blending into the blah, 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 will help you connect better, no matter what the conversation. For more tips, Hit survivalspeech.com. I'm Holland Cook. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. Why does a U.S. orthodontist make more than some CEOs? You get that dental bill and you'll know. Implants, partial or full bridge, the kids need braces? Fractions of U.S. prices. Balloon angioplasty for heart patients in the U.S. is $50,000. Thailand, under $7,000. Heart bypass, joint and hip replacement, cancer, many procedures under the price of your Obamacare deductible and copay. Don't risk bankruptcy. Hit us up now. We'll show you how at asiarunlikehellguide.com. You can connect with the Liberty Radio Network via our Facebook page at facebook.lrn.fm. That's facebook.lrn.fm. It's Free Talk Live, and you can bring up anything you want toll-free. Psychopathic sociopath types. They're running for political office in the most important election of our lifetime. I'm kidding. I don't really all the elections that. in our lifetime. Yeah, I don't I don't really believe that for a moment. But that's what people always say as though this one is going to be the one for the records. This is going to change everything, which, of course, never actually transpires. We'll uh, get into more of that here in moments. Your calls and thoughts are welcome here at 855 450 free. And uh, if you have been thinking about promoting your business or product and service, Free Talk Live is Having a sale. Yeah, well, I'd love to uh, have you on board. Certainly, I can talk to you about rates. I'd prefer not to just rattle them off here on, on the air because it's it's kind of confusing. You know, one ad and what it costs really isn't the issue. You have to sort of have frequency when it comes to radio, so I'd rather talk to people about budgets. But, yeah, love to have, love to, to have, talk to you about how Free Talk Live can help you with your business. We're on 160 radio stations across the country. How many, Ian? Over 160. 165 yeah. or something like that. Not quite. And uh, we we also were rated the best political podcast five times by podcastawards.com. I think that we're still the only podcast to ever win that award five times. I could be wrong. I haven't checked uh, this year. haven't really 
ranked and tallied those things. But We're also heard on satellite radio across the globe in various different and places. And iHeartRadio on the internet and, and lots of streams. online and podcast. And, you know, we got a lot of different uh, venues for you. I guess that we'd probably have a distribution of somewhere around a half a million a week. To get your message out, whatever that message happens to be. Folks can reach out with interest by uh, email. Yeah, marketfreetalklive.com would be great. Don't worry about what the, the last letter of my name is. I've got them both, marketfreetalklive.com. All right, let's go to your calls and thoughts, and we'll talk about these uh, psycho politicians here in a moment. Dennis, you're on Free Talk Live from North Carolina. Hi, Dennis. Hi, how are you guys? Good. What's on your mind tonight? Well, unfortunately, Hillary Clinton's on my mind. Ew. Yeah, I know. I tell you what, I've, I've been limp all day. Uh, <laughs> okay. Has, has, she, has she physically uh, announced that she's going to be running in 2016? No clue. I don't think anybody I, has. I pay almost zero attention to those sorts of matters. Why do you ask? I'm just curious because, you know, a lot of talk going on about how she's possibly going to run uh, in 2016. I just wanted to get you guys' take on uh, what do you think the possibility of her having a chance at winning would be. Again, I have no, I have no input whatsoever on those matters. They're all just a bunch of scumbags to me. So uh, I'll give you a and... wild c- conjecture if you want. Uh, the presidency has ba- bebopped back and forth between Republicans and Democrats over the course of years. What we've basically had um, with uh, the Bush administration, the the first Bush administration being a uh, uh, you know, not quite fitting. This is is that it's gone Democrat Republican, Democrat Republican, with each of them getting two terms. Reagan was obviously very successful, and he was able to to foist that off on uh, on Bush, but he only made it one term. So, yeah, I, you know, most of the last 20 years, it's been two terms, one, two terms, the other. So I would look at the uh, Republican that won the the primary as uh, the next president would be a guess. Hey, aren't people looking at Mitt Romney to be the next? Uh, what about old the, Jeb Bush? The next winner? What, what, why not be Bush versus Clinton again? I've heard that rumor for a couple years now that uh, the, you know, the power. Minute. The oh, pa- I would love it. We could all go back to 1992 will... yeah, the... when times were sweet. The powers that be will select another Bush and another Clinton to uh, be the uh, the battle in 2016. And... No, if Romney, if Romney won the election, he would have eliminated the debt and he would have kicked huh? some butt. What are you what talking about? What debt are you talking about? Which, de- which debt he are you talking about? It, he would have done it all in four years. What kind of world Romney? do you live in, man? Romney's, uh, Romney's a commie, just like all the rest yeah, of the Yeah, Romney and are. implemented Romney care in Massachusetts, so he would have totally been for, uh, for you know, universal health care. But what makes you think he would have eliminated the debt? What kind of magical wizardry uh, would he have been able to pull out? How would he have done that one? Hey, well, the Republican said he would have done it. <laughs> Thanks, awesome. Dennis, for the call, man. I appreciate it. And hey. Dennis know. wins, the, yeah, the, the, win, wins win. the radio. All right. Yep, there you go. 855 three. Rulers seek the rule, writes Jeff Thomas over at LouRockwell.com. Well, that seems a bit obvious, doesn't it, he asks. And yet, time after time, we elect new leaders imagining that this new group will be better. They'll represent us as they promised. Unfortunately, the democratic system doesn't really work very well at all. The idea is supposed to be that if the old leaders overstep their bounds, new candidates may come forth who promise a reversal of the autocracy of the previous group, and we elect them. They will then proceed to implement that reversal. American democracy and communism and all forms of the state, all you have to do is have a good story. you got to have the best story, the story that sure. will resonate with the most people. You don't have to have results. You just have to have a good story, and they'll elect you year after year. What they've, they've uh, And story sounds too much like a lie. What they call it now is a narrative. Right. They okay. use the term narrative to describe the bull crap that they foist on us. Of course, we all know that it's this last bit that consistently fails to happen. The new group does not fulfill its promises to the electorate. In fact, it's almost inv- it almost invariably seeks to increase its power over them. And as each group assumes greater power than the previous one, the country slowly declines until ultimately it reaches a state of tyranny. But what is at the heart of this process? Why on earth does it never seem to happen that the new leaders actually diminish their power and become true representatives of those who elected them? Surely we must get a few good leaders once in a while. To answer this question, let's have another look at the title at the top of the page, which is rulers seek to rule. Ruling is not a side issue. It's not a byproduct. It's their very purpose. That's the reason they ran for elected office. But then why do better, less obsessed people not run? 
Well, occasionally they do, mostly at the lower levels of public office, where they soon find that politics is a nasty business and that their fellow office holders detest them for their integrity. Well, also, you have to love it, right? Like, you have to love ruling over other people because, like, think about it for a second. Who's going to be the better architect? The architect who's trying to be an architect because he's trying to help people people, or, you know, mommy said he should be an architect or whatever, or the architect that truly mm -hmm. loves architecture, building buildings, exciting new buildings that serve people well. Like that guy is going, or gal, whatever, is going to be the best architect because he or she is passionate about their work. Now, the problem with politicians isn't that they're passionate about their work. It's what their work is, which is ruling over people. To uh, go on here from LouRockwell.com, so so they do get elected every now and then, but then they find themselves isolated, much like a New York policeman Frank Serpico, a lamb amongst vipers. In such an environment, it's unlikely that a good guy will last long. There arises the occasional Ron Paul, a beacon in the night, but the Ron Pauls are rare and even more rarely attain high office. Instead, those who are most likely to pursue public office and most likely to remain there are those that most desire to rule. Seems pretty crystal clear, right? It does seem clear. Uh, so if we follow this reasoning along, who within a given society does most want to rule? Well, clearly those who are the most obsessive in their desire to control others. Even more so if they possess this desire to a pathological degree. In small jurisdictions, this is less pronounced because there are fewer people to run for office. The larger the country, the greater the likelihood that those who are pathological will not only come forward, but will do whatever it takes to succeed. Their odds of initial and continued success are therefore far greater than those of the good candidates. If the above reasoning is correct, we'd find our legislatures full of pathological people. In a large country... Well, I mean, think about it for a second. Who's going to do better generally in elections? Those that can tell lies. Not just bald-faced lies that they're not going to get away with, but really good lies. Mm. Um, or yeah. people who tell the truth. I mean, I, I would have thought maybe at one point in my life, I, I suppose you could convince somebody if you never saw how the political system works that truth tellers would do better. Because I think that people who tell the truth do better in just about every other area of life. But when it comes to politicians, what I've seen is that people who tell lies seem to be more successful. In a large country, all candidates in all parties might well answer this description, resulting in a virtual guarantee that the top spots would be filled by those who are pathological. Estimates hold that approximately 6.2% of any population are likely to be narcissistic. Socio sociopaths are at 4%. So let's test this out. Uh, according to the author here, let's look at a list of character traits of each of these psychopathies and ask ourselves if the, descri if the descriptions fit any or all of our rulers. So we're going to start off with the list here. Of, a list uh, of what makes a person a sociopath. And narcissist. So, well, what's the difference between those two? Isn't, aren't they kind of close? Mm, no, I think there's a difference. We can okay. uh, we can get into the the details on that here in a moment. You're welcome to share your thoughts as well. And if there's any interesting, probably no results really at this point, but as the night rolls on here, if there are any interesting results, obviously there's some, been some medical marijuana. For instance, Florida has a ballot provision about that. And, of course, ballot provisions tend to actually be something of more note, I think, than the average political campaign between different politicians. So if you want to share some of your local uh, interesting results, you're welcome to do that if it would be of interest to people outside of, you know, your neighborhood. 855-450 free. You can take control here. It's Free Talk Live. If Americans continue their reckless disregard of the U.S. Constitution, our freedoms and way of life may not continue. Original Intent, Spoiler, and Molan La Bay is a three-movie special that explains what we can do. From the director of Fiat Empire, this trio of movies features Ron Paul, Pat Buchanan, Edwin Vieira, and many others. On sale now at moviepubs.net. This is a mini library you don't want to be without. 
Lumber Liquidators, America's largest specialty flooring store, is using our buying power to offer great deals on over 230 hardwood and laminate floors just in time for the holidays. Get pre-finished three-quarter inch solid maple for $159 a square foot. That's more than half off other stores. Save up to 43% on our thickest and best laminates. Plus, attached padding at no extra cost. And get other incredible flooring deals. Plus, 18-month special financing. Get to your local store. These deals are going on now. Visit LumberLiquidators.com to find a store near you. I love my magic mud. I drink a lot of coffee. I had stains on my teeth. Then I found my magic mud, and I was told it would remove stains. So I paid attention when I brushed the first time. My magic mud is black tooth powder, and the difference it made in my teeth in one application was noticeable. With four, my teeth were as white as you normal folks out there. Please go to mymagicmud.com and buy a jar. There's 150 applications for 25 bucks. You can use Bitcoin, mymagicmud.com. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty news and activist updates. Online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Tuesday, November 4th, 2014. Gold is trading around $1,171, silver around $16.07, and Bitcoin is trading around $324. Today's Bitcoin price brought to you by ExpressCoin, the fastest and most reliable way to buy Bitcoin. Buy Bitcoin today at ExpressCoin.com. Today's edition of Liberty Beat is brought to you by our newest sponsor, eFoods Direct. Redefining the way you think about storable food. Easy to make and great tasting with a shelf life of over 25 years. To celebrate our new partnership, eFoods Direct is offering Liberty Beat listeners 10% off their purchases. To take advantage of this exciting offer, call 800-620-5520 and mention coupon code Liberty Beat. To learn more or buy online, visit eFoodsDirect.com. In the news, on Monday, the United States Air Force fired Colonel Carl Jones, who supervised over 150 intercontinental nuclear missiles at the Warren Base in Wyoming. According to Stars and Stripes, the causes for Jones firing are supposedly tied to his manipulation of and cruelty towards subordinates. This incident comes within only one year of the firing of General Michael Carey, the man who oversaw all intercontinental missiles in the United States. Colonel Carl Jones was discharged from his nuclear supervision duties, but retains a job with the service. Jones has been reassigned as a special assistant to the new commander. Beginning today, the Electronic Frontier Foundation will attempt to convince a judge that the National Security Agency should not be allowed to collect and store phone records of millions of Americans. The EFF and the American Civil Liberties Union will present arguments in the case of Clayman versus Obama. Following the disclosures by whistleblower Edward Snowden regarding the NSA's collection of phone records, lawyer Larry Clayman sued the federal government and won a preliminary injunction in the case. Now the EFF must convince a judge that the data collection violates the Fourth Amendment. The group Women Against War has launched a campaign called Ground the Drones in Albany, New York. The campaign involves the Drones Quilt program and a performance play called Grounded, which is being performed at local theaters. For the quilt project, the women created quilts that recognize civilian drone victims in Pakistan, Afghanistan, Somalia, and Yemen. Support for Liberty Beat comes from Central Texas Gunworks, your online source for firearms, firearm accessories, and ammunition. They take major credit cards and now accept Bitcoin. Visit them online, shop.centraltexasgunworks.com. Support comes from Marjorie Wildcraft's Grow Your Own Groceries, homegrown food on every table. That's growyourowngroceries.org. This is the Liberty Beat for Tuesday, November 4th, 2014. Check out the website at thelibertybeat.com and like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash thelibertybeat. The UK government is set to release documents related to a secret policy which details the government's legal basis for intercepting typically legally protected communications between lawyers and their clients. The documents will be released as part of a case being heard at the Investigatory Powers Tribunal.
an agency that deals with complaints against intelligence services. The criteria the government uses to determine what information is not privileged is currently unknown. Although the information will not be released publicly, it will be revealed through the trial for the media to report on. Today, voters in Colorado and Oregon will decide whether or not to label genetically modified organisms. Former Ohio Congressman Dennis Kucinich stated that he supports the state's efforts to give consumers the ability to know what's in their food. Large corporations have been pouring millions of dollars into the efforts to oppose the labeling of GMOs. If the states pass the measures, they would join Vermont in the fight for labeling. Earlier this year, Vermont passed a labeling law and was immediately sued by major food producers seeking to overturn the bill. A young woman who moved to Oregon to take advantage of the state's assisted suicide law took lethal drugs prescribed by a doctor and has died. That word from a spokesman on Sunday. 29-year-old Brittany Maynard was diagnosed with brain cancer on New Year's Day and was later given six months to live. Support for Liberty Beat comes from Midas Resources Incorporated, helping clients to convert their paper 401ks and IRAs to solid gold and silver. Get their 10 Reasons book free by calling 800-686-2237. That number again, 800-686-2237. This is the Liberty Beat for Tuesday, November 4th, 2014. Check out the website at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan reporting. Reminding you, spread liberty with a smile. With each successive bite failing to relieve his anxieties, increasingly worried man Dylan Hawks told reporters today that he has yet to come across any trace of guacamole in his burrito, despite having specifically requested it when ordering. No, there definitely wasn't any guac there. Cheese, beans, chorizo. Oh man, I hope they didn't forget. Hawks has continued to maintain hope that there may still be an undiscovered sliver of avocado somewhere in his tortilla. However, with his fears for the meal mounting, Hawks has reportedly considered asking the cashier for a refund at various points while eating the burrito. The thing is, if you had a burrito and it was missing cheese, you might not notice it because there's sour cream, but guacamole is completely different. I just don't know how I wouldn't have tasted it by now. Christ, I'm almost done with this thing. This is the Onion News Network. Free Talk Live. You can dial in toll-free here at 855-450-FREE. Coming up, we'll dig into the personalities of politicians, narcissists, sociopaths. We'll find out what exactly defines narcissism and sociopathy uh, and see how it applies to the people running for political office where you live. Here in a little bit, our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. With you here tonight, you've got Ian. Johnny Ray. And Mark. Right back into your calls and thoughts. Ladies first, we've got Bernice in Grand Rapids. You're on Free Talk Live. Hi, Bernice. Do you remember me? Uh, well, there's a lot of people that call the show, and uh, no, not necessarily. So uh, I do, but uh, our listeners who are listening now likely don't. So go ahead. Oh, okay. Oh, you remember months ago I called you to talk about my son, Christopher? Who yeah. you, you remember he became a ward at a state when he was 19? Right. Oh, my. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, um, moved him to another home in August because something happened at that home. Uh, Chris was outside the home one day, and he exposed himself. And I, I think a neighbor saw him, and, and uh, she called the police, so they decided to move him again. Hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, I told you he'd been is, in like seven different, seven different yeah. homes. Is this close, closer or farther from your house? Uh, I think, oh, this one is closer. Now, mm-hmm. what's the reason that he became a ward of the state? Is because it was determined he couldn't take care of himself? I don't recall the, the details there. Oh, oh. Oh, uh, they said we was a hindrance to his mental health needs. You, as uh, you the know, family, as his mother, as uh, as the family members, they said you you weren't helping, yeah, so the state took him. Yeah, they they yeah he was supposed to have a mental illness, mm. and they said we was a hindrance. But but we had him on our insurance because of his disability, you know. So and also he had doctors, and stuff, you know. Mm-hmm. 
So what did you call to tell us tonight? Just that he'd been moved, or was there something else um, that has developed? Uh, well, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, anyway, um, I did call Senator Justice Brand's office. He's a senator in Michigan, a state senator. Mm-hmm. And uh, I called his office last week, and I, I talked to somebody on the staff. I, I told her that they don't keep Chris in the home long. He's been in seven different homes, you know, since he was 19. And he don't stay in the home long. And, and uh, anyway, she called me back some days later, and she told me to talk to the guardian. But, you know, the guardian doesn't have to listen to me because she's a state-appointed guardian, you know. You know, that's a, well, so it's you know, not unusual a, to get a runaround, right, from these uh, politicians. It's got to really stink when it's your kid, though. Yeah, you know? I mean, they uh, they don't care. Um, and if they pretend to care, then that's really all they're doing is they're just pretending because it's election season. And then once they get elected again, they won't care again. Um, it's really frustrating. And Bernice, I wish you the best of luck. Thanks for the call tonight. The uh, toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Boy, it must really suck to live in a state where when you call a senator... Uh, for the state, you have to talk to staff members because in New Hampshire, you don't have to do that. In New Hampshire, you can actually call and uh, the, the senator around here, she's got her phone, her cell phone number listed on the state website last time I looked. You can call her on her cell phone. I mean, that's pretty unusual compared to a lot of states. I don't know how many states where it's like that, but in New Hampshire, uh, if you love freedom, if you're a liberty-loving individual listening to this show— then try to imagine what it could be like to actually be able to speak to these people. I understand they may be sociopaths, some of them, but uh, in New Hampshire, you can actually talk to these people. And and to that to uh, to that end, I think that helps connect them with the people they're supposedly representing. They don't have the the political staff to use as gatekeepers to protect them from the opinions of the public. I think it can help, but at this point, uh, the poor lady is separated from her son, and likely it's never going to change. Oh, I wasn't saying anything was going to change for her. She was. Yeah. She lives in Michigan. Um, I just was saying that if you know, I, I feel bad for her because you know, if you live in a place where these folks are, uh, you know, first of all, they're mostly unaccountable in general. But if you can't even talk to them, I mean, that's a that's a pretty isolating thing, right? Oh, I talked to her staff member. Well, great. That her staff member's job is to prevent the senator, or he his staff member's job is to prevent the senator from having, from to, having talk to, to talk to you. And having to make things up on the spot and come up with lies and whatever, let the staff member just blow everybody off rather than actually have to, you know, listen to what somebody has to say. Here in New Hampshire, uh, we've actually got dozens of liberty-oriented people who are running for state office. Now, how many of those people are sociopaths? I don't know. I imagine we would find out once they got elected if they had any sociopathic tendencies. Uh, But I do know that we have had people in New Hampshire— who love freedom, who've been elected as both Republicans and Democrats. And that's something that the libertarian movement around the country cannot claim. They uh, they just, I'm sorry, we've had more success in a decade of the Free State Project, of the early mover phase of the Free State Project. The full-on move hasn't even happened yet. The idea of moving 20,000 liberty-oriented people all to one place, we've only got 1,600 of them so far. The official move has yet to begin, and we've already gotten a dozen liberty folks in at one time in the state house. Yeah, I would say that it's, I, I, just a guess here, but I, I'm, I'll bet you that the... Free State Project will have more people elected this term than the Libertarian Party has had elected in its existence. I'd say that's an accurate statement. I think it's already true. I think that's in one term yeah. versus its entire existence. Yeah. That's why I just, you know, like politics, third party, it just doesn't make any sense to me. Let's go to Corey in St. George, Utah. You're on Free Talk Live listening to KZNU. Hello, Corey. Hey guys, how you doing? What's on your mind tonight? Well, uh, you guys uh, talked a little bit about a week ago about the dance, uh, the dance law here in St. George that the cops shut down a dance because yeah, it was oh, pretty yeah. ridiculous. <laughs> and so I was going to give you guys a little update what's going on. Yeah, please. Um, there's a um, there's. My buddy uh, Jeff, he start. Uh, we we were all chatting on Facebook about what we were going to do about it, um, and he posted something in a, in on something on Facebook, and then he got uh, a message from Jared Teddington responding to him. Who's and that? He said, "The Jared Teddington's the guy who owns Heart of Dixie, the guy who 
who's one of the main promoters for all the dads. So this was the pro- this is the promoter that got into an agreement with uh, a fun kind of like a family fun zone kind of place there in St. George. Uh, they were going to have kind of a Halloween bash a couple weeks ago, and the police showed up claiming they didn't have a permit for dancing and that if anyone was caught dancing, there would be punishment uh, to be doled out. And essentially the police shut down the party by doing that. But uh, go ahead with the uh, the rest of the story. Yeah, and so that, that they got shut down. And so Jared Teddington, uh, he, my, my uh, buddy Jeff wanted to do a protest dance of some form. Mm. And this Thursday night, there's going to be a... Uh, there's going to be an event at the town hall where we're, they're going to go and voice their concerns to the town hall in the beginning. And then afterwards, there's going to be a dance. Awesome. That's excellent. Now, uh, where will this dance be held? Um, it's at the firehouse, apparently. I, um, I, I can is the get, firehouse, I can hold tell, on, just to be clear, is that a club or is that like the, the place f- where the fire engines are parked? Yeah. I'm not absolutely sure, um, but it's it's probably going to be announced a little bit more um, as time mm-hmm. goes on. But we do. But DJs have already volunteered for it, um, so that so it's going to happen. And so it'll be at nine o'clock that same night. And the same promoter, the Heart of Dixie, they're behind this. Um, I think this. I think the pro the Heart of Dixie guy wants to do the protest at the city council, but then some other people have come up with. Uh, the dance afterwards. Will the and dance? Have, uh, just curious. Will the dance be bothering to pull a permit? Um, it possibly could. Oh, that would be um, unfortunate. I that would be a I, real. I'm, I'm, it would be a real I'm tragedy not, to hold a what is supposed not, to be a protest dance and then to I don't pull think a permit. They're charging money for it though, and that's the reason I would be. I would be. It wouldn't. They couldn't really pull a permit on that one because they're not actually charging a dance. If they're not Does that matter when it comes to uh, the the rules there, the city ordinance in St. George, whether or not the dance party is, you know, to make money or not? Yeah, that actually does matter. I uh, I read the law the other day. It was Ridiculous. pretty clear in that, well, in that you can't make, that it was all about the business owner and making money in it. So keep me in the keep me in the loop because I think you should be able to make money and dance or not make money and dance. Either way, dancing should be legal in St. George, but you shouldn't have to ask permission. And I hope you guys don't. Let us know what happens, Corey. And thanks for the call tonight. Yeah, I appreciate it, the it, update, it, dude. There's more coming up here in moments. This is Free Talk Live. Here's a special message for those of you who owe the IRS at least ten thousand or more in back taxes. The IRS has special programs in place that could eliminate or reduce your tax debt by thousands of dollars. Call the tax helpline that has been set up to help you. 800-691-6129. That's 800-691-6129. Stop the wage garnishments, levies, and tax liens now. Once you've qualified and enrolled, the IRS will stop all the collection activities against you. These unique programs have been allocated to help the economy and significantly reduce or eliminate your tax burden. The IRS is currently accepting reduced settlements and other favorable programs. You may qualify for substantial savings, so get the help you need. For free information and to see if you qualify, take down the number now for the Tax Representation Hotline. 800-691-6129. That's 800-691-6129. 800-691-6129. Gold isn't for you? Ted Anderson, president of Midas Resources, one of the world's premier gold and precious metal investing firms. I get it. You wouldn't buy gold if you believed that the government is doing a great job, that the Fed will stop handing out trillions of dollars like bailout candy, that Social Security would be there for you. That's not what's happening. You might even pass on gold if the stimulus package wouldn't fuel inflation, or that the dollar wouldn't lose value, or that your retirement would be secure. If all looks rosy to you, then now is not the time to buy gold. For the realist, there have never been more sobering reasons to diversify with gold. Since 2001, the U.S. dollar index has tanked 30% while gold has risen 300%. Right now, savvy investors are adding gold to their portfolios. You should too. Find out what they know. Call us and I'll send you 10 reasons why gold will do very well free. 800-686-2237. 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. 
Free Talk Live, the show where anyone can call about whatever they want. And we do mean anyone. I, 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 I don't forgot your name, but we, we, we had 9-11, right? Uh-huh. Okay, uh, well, if, if, if they weren't here, could it have happened? Could what have happened? If who wasn't here? Could, 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 if, How if wasted the, are you? Is what I want to no, 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 sir. No, sir. No, I'm not wasted. Okay. No, please just just listen to it. Okay. <laughs> if the people weren't here that that, that that drove the planes into into the Twin Towers, yeah. right? They flew them. They didn't drive them, but okay. No, I'm not saying that. Wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait a minute. Because uh-huh. now you... you, you I, Wow. Yeah, yeah, I got to think a minute. That's all right. They were, we got they nothing were, but time. <laughs> they, they, Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. Majid lives in Nor Devin, Armenia with his wife, kids, and grandkids all in the same house. They have cows, but to compete against the big ranchers, Majid needed to get a loan for more cattle. Free Talk Live helped him get a loan for the cows. He bought them, and now he's very happy with the expansion of his farm. You can help us help more people by getting your coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com. Make a difference, one cup at a time. Get a free pound to try out the subscription. Cancel at any time. Coffee.freetalklive.com. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up anything you want. 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. As the show rolls on here tonight, it is, of course, election, uh, the election evening. Uh, There are numbers rolling in across the East Coast, I imagine, at this point in certain places. And if you've had an interesting ballot measure that you're excited about where you're located, I'd like to hear about it. I know that in Florida, I think it's ballot measure number two, that will be legalizing medical cannabis, which would be an amazing thing. And also a bizarre situation if it were to happen, because in Florida, it's also illegal to possess a pipe that uh, is used for the you know, the consumption of drugs. So I'm wondering if uh, they'll be arresting medical patients if the medical program goes through, but then continue to arrest the patients for possession of drug paraphernalia, which in Florida can also net you a felony. If you are now, uh, if you get, if you're caught a second time with a pipe, with a marijuana pipe, the second time is a felony charge in Florida. So we'll see how the voters decide on that one. I'm interested to know. I do know that in Guam, apparently. They legalized medical marijuana. Voters in Guam approved a ballot initiative that would legalize marijuana for debilitating medical conditions such as epilepsy, HIV, cancer, and glaucoma. The bill passed by more than 56% makes Guam the first U.S. territory to legalize medical pot. In addition, voters in Alaska, Oregon, and Washington, D.C. will be deciding to legalize pot for recreational purposes. Now, of course, we know that D.C., through their process, which is an arduous one, the city council already has decriminalized possession of up to an ounce. I believe it was an ounce, maybe two ounces, but and at least an ounce of marijuana uh, within city limits. And that did go through. So we may see more legalization pass uh, within the next 24 hours by, by the time we get the, you know, the results tomorrow at some point. So if you'd like to comment on those numbers when they're available to bring them to our attention, certainly we are not paying attention to all 50 states. I don't know what's going on out there, Uh, so it's up to you to inform us if something exciting is happening. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Now, ballot measures can actually have an immediate or mostly immediate effect on the political system. And uh, so they're, to me, more interesting than politician A versus politician B. 
And we were talking earlier about these politicians, and I want to continue doing that here in a moment. First, I want to tell you about antiwar.com. Yeah, antiwar.com is a very unique website. It's a website that takes a uh, look at the foreign policy issues from a standpoint that the average news agency doesn't. They're all pro-state and all pro-war. Antiwar.com attempts to be as unbiased as they can while promoting the anti-war state, uh, anti-war uh, uh, standpoint. So please go to antiwar.com and check them out because the fact is that the mainstream media, the you know Federal Reserve, they have they have all the money they need. Antiwar.com, really, they don't have anything but you. The staff is down to a skeleton crew with minimal pay. They're committed to keeping the website up with the best of the worst of all the bad news, but they can't do it for free. They can't do it without you. They need your donation. Please go to antiwar.com and donate or call them today. They proudly and gladly take Bitcoin for all you Bitcoin millionaires out there. Antiwar.com slash donate because war is the health of the state. So we were sharing a story from lewrockwell.com, and I believe it is syndicated over from Doug Casey's International Man, author Jeff Thomas, writing about the sociopaths that are running for political office and explaining why it is that things never change. I mean, despite the fact that every two to four years, there's always some new batch of politicians claiming they're going to change things and they're going to make things better, more free and lower taxes and all kinds of promises are made. And of course, they're always broken. Inevitably, these people are proven to be a bunch of liars and scumbags and thugs, but yet Americans continue to believe the story that this time is different. This batch of politicians this year, we need to get them into office because they're the ones who are going to save us. And of course, you know, anybody that's paying attention over all these years should know that that's a bunch of bunk. Um, but the question was, well, why is this happening? Well, because sociopaths, people, you know, who just don't care about you and are only interested in helping themselves, uh, have no remorse, and we'll get into some of the uh, details on what a sociopath is here. But uh, these politicians, the people that seek these positions, they're the ones who want to rule over people. They're the ones who desire control. And they're, in many cases, willing to do anything that it takes to get that control over you, including tell you all kinds of lies, tell you exactly what it is that you want to hear. And so what is narcissism and sociopathy, and how do they fit the uh, character traits of these politicians, these psycho, uh, psychopathies. I found myself more lining up with the sociopathic traits than the narcissistic traits. So the traits of narcissism <laughs> include... Okay, let's hear them. Grandiose sense of self-importance, preoccupied with... Well, what does that mean? What is a grandiose sense of self-importance? Someone who thinks that they're very, very important, I guess. But yeah, some people some, pe some people will some people believe that they're just going to live and have some relationships and die and not really leave a real big impact on the world necessarily. Some people are born and they just think that they're destined to be to be to be huge and like you, Mark, but some where people you, are. you know, talk about how you're a super genius. Well, the super genius thing, um, like I don't expect you to get it. But um, the fact is, is that Super Genius is a joke. Wiley Coyote, uh, back in the 70s when they had him talk, mm -hmm. he hand out the card, Wiley Coyote, yes, Super Genius, right? And Sometimes I think you don't guy, think it's a joke, though. This is the guy that gets clobbered um, on a regular basis. So the Super Genius thing is kind of tongue-in-cheek. Do Kinda. I think I'm a smart guy? I do think I'm a smart guy. Do I think Free Talk Live would fall apart without me? I do think that Free Talk Live would fall apart without me. Do I think that I'm going to make an impact on the world? Yes, I do. Is that uh, a grandiose sense of self-importance? It's I don't realistic. Know. I don't know. It's up to you to decide that. Going on with a list here of narcissism. Preoccupied with fantasies of unlimited success and power. Requires excessive admiration. Has a pronounced sense of entitlement. Is exploitative of others. Lacks empathy. And demonstrates arrogant, haughty behavior. Sociopathy includes superficial charm and good intelligence. I think I, I've got a few of those things from the narcissistic thing. I just, okay. Just, I've got a few of those. But, got, I, but I'm not, not empathetic. Um, I'm certainly empathetic. And uh, um, as far as haughty behavior, I treat people very nice. Johnny Ray? Uh, let's see. I, I am, I, I'm kind of a curious mix of arrogance and humility. But I... 
do not have a grandiose sense of self-importance. I kind of, I, I'd say that I did when I was 12. Mm. Like I, I knew that, that I was, that's when I, it, it was when I was 12 when I, when I started having ideas that, that all these other people were robots just put here to test me. <laughs> uh, but I grew out of that. You know, there, the evidence didn't really support that, that, that theory of mine. Preoccupied with fantasies of unlimited success and power. Uh, preoccupied, no. Requires excessive admiration, no. no. Profound sense of entitlement. I do get wounded sometimes when people don't treat me a certain way, but then I realize that I was kind of being silly. Lacks empathy. No, I think that I am sort of empathetic. But with the so you've just begun the sociopathy. Superficial charm, I have that. Good intelligence, yes. Great intelligence, no. <laughs> All right, we'll come back with more here. Uh, what is a sociopath? What is that? Uh, what are the the personality descriptions here? Uh, Eight fifty five, four fifty free. Do these apply to politicians in your area? Good chance they do, whether you realize it or not. It's free talk live. You can share your thoughts here on whatever's on your mind as well. This alert just came in. This special announcement is for business owners and leaders of organizations who've been waiting for the right time to build. General Steel has made it impossible to wait any longer with rock bottom prices that could save you thousands. That's right, General Steel, America's leader in pre-engineered structures, is offering buildings at prices you will never see again. Don't miss these prices. A 50 by 100 for $35,000. You heard right, that's 5,000 square feet for $35,000. Manufacturers, if you need a larger building, try a 100 by 100 commercial building for $129,000. You can't afford to rent with these prices. Imagine a 70 by 100 foot church building for under $69,000. With the economy improving and interest rates still at historic Lows. You can't afford to wait. So call 866-91-STEEL. Lock in your price now. Call 866-91-STEEL. That's 866-917-8335. If you're struggling to pay or haven't been making your student loan payments, listen carefully to this urgent alert. Have you been out of school for 10 or more years and you're still making your student loan payments? Are your student loans past due or even in default? Can't go back to school because of an old student loan problem? Fast Track Student Loans can get your student loans out of default, stop any wage garnishments, stop collection calls, and stop seizure of your tax refund. Give yourself a break. Stop the stress and get your student loan payments down to as little as $25 a month based on what you can afford to pay. One quick 10-minute call could help you solve your student loan problems. So call right now. Not available in all states. Payments may vary based on income. 800-215-6813. My name is Jacob Hornberger. I'm president of the Future of Freedom Foundation, which Congressman Ron Paul awarded for having an outstanding freedom website. Write us at FFF at FFF.org and we'll send you a free three-month subscription to our monthly journal of libertarian essays and our booklet, Economic Liberty in the Constitution, which George Mason University economics professor Walter Williams praised in a recent column. That's FFF at FFF.org. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. Free Press Publications is an independent, alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. 
FPP brings you daily news and commentary on the website fpp.cc, as well as a daily five-minute newscast, FPP Radio News, and weekly news, views, and commentary in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com, and the monthly newspaper, FPP News at news.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at FPP.cc. That's FPP.cc, as in Creative Commons. Help get LRN.FM into more ears. Visit promote.lrn.fm for a free bumper sticker, flyers, banners, graphics, and more. Promote.lrn.fm. It's Free Talk Live. You're welcome to bring up anything that you want here at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Talking about some of the personality traits that you'll find common to politicians. Yes, likely the politicians running for office, even in your area. Turns out they're pretty much all the same. Yeah, I know. You probably think there's some kind of difference between... There's a chance you think there's some kind of difference between the Republicans and Democrats in your area. But the reality is, most of them just want to control your life. Maybe they have different ideas about how to go about doing that. Maybe some of them would prefer to increase their control in one area, and others would prefer to increase their control in another area. But one thing you can almost count on is whichever set of them that you decide to vote for, if you decide to vote that uh, odds are good that if they get elected, they're not going to work to repeal any of the stuff that's already been put into place. They're going to work to pass new stuff, new re restrictions and new taxes and new controls and regulations. Right. They will spend next to zero time trying to withdraw old bad programs and end old taxes. No, no, you won't see any of that happening no matter who you elect. Right. I mean, like, ask yourself for just a second, what, um, what was the last program that some uh, Democrat or Republican repealed. I mean, it's pretty rare that you see it happen at all. Um, the, the sad part is, is Republicans are supposed to be the party of small government. You mm. never see them repeal anything. Like, nothing. I, I just can't think of anything off the top of my head. Well, you must the have missed Democrats it, Mark. The Democrats try must... to, uh, you know, expand freedom in the uh, in the area of uh, sort of social freedoms, and they actually try to do it, but usually in the process they grow the government. Um, libertarians, they don't get elected at all. So... Well, except in New Hampshire, where libertarians are getting elected as but not, Republicans I'm and Democrats. I'm talking about political parties here. Ah, okay. Yeah, you're right about that. So, we're going down a list of uh, traits... From politicians or what they likely uh, will share, uh, narcissistic traits, sociopathy. What is sociopathy? Well, it's superficial charm and good intelligence. This is according to a, a piece over on LouRockwell.com. Unreliability, untruthfulness, and insincerity. A lack of remorse Which one is this shame. one? This is sociopathy. Sociopathy. So they tell lies. Yep. They don't feel bad about it. They're unreliable. They, they won't do what they say they're going to do. That's what a liar uh, is. Lack of remorse and shame. Poor, yep. poor judgment and failure to learn by experience, and pathologic egocentricity and incapacity for love. Now, incapacity for love. Okay. In examining the traits and comparing them to the traits we observe in our political leaders, we no longer wonder why our leaders are not more truthful, more reliable, more representative, less arrogant, etc. In fact, in any given situation, we can expect overreach from leaders in each of the following categories— an assumed right to power over both the electorate and other sovereign states. Extreme lack of concern for truth right. or integrity. I, I wouldn't doubt for a second that politicians actually believe they have a right to rule you. Mm. As a matter of fact, I think most of the public believes that, too. Most probably because, like, it's been handed down for so long it's not even questioned. At some point in, in the past, somebody kidnapped somebody else and said, you're going to be my slave. And this, this happened, you know, often enough that, okay, I'm the slave. I guess I don't run away now. And you know, the, that person that, that owned them was basically owned by some ruler or king or noble or whatever. And then that noble was owned by some king or emperor or whatever. And it just goes on up the line. And that king said, I get my power from God, whatever that God might be. Mm -hmm. The God's been different in different situations. But basically, that's what they've been telling the people all along is, I get my power from God. It really hasn't changed that much now. Now the God is kind of the collective we. We give the power to the, the president. Which I don't. 
No, I don't give the power to him either. But I'm just saying that that's what people believe. Right. Like somehow these people have power because we have given it to them. No, nope, I haven't. And I can't give somebody power if I can't withdraw it. If I cannot withdraw my the power I've given somebody, then I don't. Then I can't give it to them. Do you, you understand? Also can't give it's only someone, stolen from me. But also, you can't give someone power you don't have to give. Right. So. If we believe in rights, and I think that those of us on the show do uh, believe in rights, if we believe in rights, then you don't have the ability, you don't have the right to take someone else's life from them. You don't have the right to take someone else's money for them, from them, rather. And so, therefore, I don't have the ability to give anyone else the power to do those things either. I can't, by telling Johnny Ray that I give him power over, you know, people, that doesn't give him anything. It doesn't give him the right to do those things because I don't by have that right. By the power vested in me by the state of who cares, well, but I, I, I now pronounce you man and wife. What I could do is if I really thought Johnny Ray would be better than me at ruling my life, and if Johnny Ray were interested in that job, I could hire Johnny Ray to be a consultant for me and you know give me advice, or I could tell Johnny Ray that I would do everything that he told me to do, and we could enter into some sort of a, an agreement with one another, but that's not what voting is. I think that's specious, really, because mostly what the government does is it provides goods and service or provides services very few goods um, the government usually outsources goods because if the government tried to actually manufacture something we would see how inefficient and bad they are at it but when they provide services like fire protection garbage collection protection uh, mm-hmm. from you know military protection or the the you know creation of roads or thing that sort of thing it's not as nearly as apparent to people how inefficient the government is Everybody understands the government's inefficient, but uh, look, I should be able to decide who provides me trash pickup, shouldn't I? Really? Yes. Shouldn't I be able to Hampshire. decide that? In in many places you can. Not look, many places, but in New Hampshire you uh, you typically many can. places around the world you certainly can. Hmm. But some, but there are people in the United States that believe that somehow garbage pickup can't be handled unless the government does it. There are examples all over the place. There are private roads all over the place. There are private power companies. There are private water companies. And frankly, everything the government does could be provided by a private organization. Everything. So going on here with the uh, list of uh, things that might apply to your local politicians, an extreme lack of concern for truth or integrity. That is, reality becomes whatever the leader has most recently decided it is. Lack of true concern for the electorate on any level, although concern may very well be pretended. Inconsistency and unreliability in actions and policymaking. Fascination with the opportunities for armed conflict, both domestic and international. Carelessness in the sacrifice of the lives of others in combat situations. Armed conflict is an interesting game to them rather than an unfortunate necessity. Well, those would be, um, yeah, in, in many cases, those are the politicians and the generals and the officers and those kind of things, the people that don't deal with it. But sometimes they do. Whatever nation is the whatever nation the reader is from, he might reread the above description whilst picturing each of the last several leaders in his country And ask himself if these traits apply. Again, the larger the country, the more likely that all the boxes are ticked with regard to every leader, regardless of political party. In addition, if the reader decides to extend the exercise to those on the second or third tiers of power, like deputy prime minister, vice president, chancellor, etc., secretary of state, depending upon the jurisdiction, my guess would be that these individuals would also fit the bill fairly well. Right then. So we were already a bit glum about those who ostensibly were elected to so-called represent our interests. Now it appears not only that they are a bad lot, but that there is little hope for improvement, short of exhuming Guy Fawkes and cloning him in large numbers. So what can we glean from this exercise? Well, we can surmise that whether a sovereign state was founded as a free republic, or whether it was founded right from the outset as an oppressive state... It's certain that the pathological individuals will be those who most desperately seek office. This means that over time, the new state will invariably progress toward tyranny until such a time as the system is ended and started anew. And what this means is that you might wish to assess the point that your home country has reached in its decline and consider whether it has reached the point of diminishing returns in regards to your own personal freedom to live life as you see fit. The good news is that at any point in history, countries exist that are at different stages of decline, and the reader has choices as to where he might reside, work, and invest if he wishes to pursue them. So I guess the suggestion here is that if you don't like it, leave. Um, and certainly there are some you know, 
better options than others as far as where you can live around the world. And I think it's an interesting observation that in a larger population area, you're more likely to get the more psychopathic people in positions of power because you know there's a larger population from which to choose those psychopaths. They can right? rule them. So if you're in a smaller population area, there aren't as many uh, psychos. Maybe they won't be as extreme. Um, and maybe the free staters, the liberty-minded folks, uh, will have a chance against them. And that's what we're hoping will happen tonight here in New Hampshire as a bunch of liberty people are on the ballot. There's more coming up here. It's Free Talk Live. Have you thought about owning gold? There are lots of reasons to own precious metals. A hedge against inflation. When the dollar tanks, metals go up. A barter currency. You can disempower the Fed by using real money. And no one knows the future. In an economic collapse, metals are likely to be a currency. Do as I've done for years. Buy your gold and silver and precious metals from Midas Resources through gold.freetalklive.com. That's gold.freetalklive.com. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at freeross.org. That's freeross.org. With autumn in the air, it's time to think about getting ready for winter. And it's time to save at HerbalHealer.com. You'll find amazing seasonal savings to prepare you for the fight against cold and flu season. Like Oregacillin to promote lung health. 30 capsules regularly $34.95, now only $25. HHA Olive Leaf, the natural antiviral, normally $16.95, now 60 capsules are just $12. HHA Elderberry Power, a great flu and virus fighter, regularly $16.95, 60 capsules, now $10. Save on all our homeopathic detoxes. Choose from lungs, kidney, liver, brain, libido, or whole body, normally $26.95, now just $20. Visit HerbalHealer.com and click on the Fall Winter Specials button to save on all our natural cold and flu fighting products. Also explore our Herbal Healer Academy correspondence courses that teach you how to handle your health naturally. HerbalHealer.com, healing the world with nature, one person at a time, since 1988. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on to join the Free State Project and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. Find out about giving to our Google AdWords campaign at amp.freetalklive.com. That's amp.freetalklive.com. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877 9938 this is the Liberty Radio Network, broadcasting the latest liberty-oriented audio content 24 hours a day at LRN.FM. It's 
Free Talk Live. You can dial toll-free here and bring up anything you want. The number is 855-450-FREE, and that number is brought to you by ProXPN, 855-450-3733. And if you've been looking for uh, some precious metals like gold and silver, you don't need to look any farther than our friends over at Midas Resources. By the way, they've got them, and you can get them online or call them toll-free at 877-857-9938. Midas Resources is the company that is behind the Genesis Communications Network, and that's the company that syndicates Free Talk Live and now has done so for a decade. Uh, sent out a message to our industry uh, list today informing program directors around the country that Free Talk Live is now 10 years old in syndication, which is... Hard to believe. That's a big deal. Uh, that's a long time for doing the show. We've been doing the show since 2002, but we were syndicated in 2004, so we've been around for 12 years, and 10 of those 12 years... Uh, as a syndicated program now on over 160 radio stations. Is that weekday syndication? Or are you talking about um, weekend syndication when we started? Weekday. Weekday. So yeah. we've actually been syndicated longer than 10 years now? 10 years in like a month. Some months. No, it was, it was longer than that because we got asked to uh, to be weekdays after two shows. So two weeks. Yeah. And but we had to take a little time. We to had to take, that. it took a, a few months for you to put together the studio, at least two. Yeah. So some months. It's 10 years, Mark. It's yes. 10 years. So anyway, thanks to the Genesis Communications Network and their hardworking crew behind the scenes for helping make all this possible. And it's it's Midas Resources that also helps make this possible. Listeners like you, buying your gold and silver through Midas Resources helps Free Talk Live. It helps us directly in that we get a very, very small amount off of each sale, and it helps us indirectly in that it helps Midas Resources, and if Midas Resources is a healthy business, then Genesis Communications Network, it follows, should also be a healthy business. So you can go and get your gold and silver at silver.freetalklive.com or gold.freetalklive.com. takes you to the same place, or call them up toll-free at 877-857-9938. Gold and silver, great hedges against inflation over time. And right now, Mark, you told me the other day, silver is at its lowest point in quite a while. Yeah, 16, many, many years. Bucks, something like that. So good time to buy. Our toll-free number tonight, 855-450-FREE. There's a story over at Time Magazine claiming that third-party candidates make a difference far less often than you think. Let's go first to Pete in California. You're on Free Talk Live. Pete. Hey, how you doing? Uh, my comment for the radio is... Uh you know, you know, we're talking before about the uh, biblical need for execution. The what? The biblical. Now we're talking about. Now we're talking about the biblical need for execution. The biblical need. Oh yeah, of course. You know, it's called justice. Part of love is justice. So I think we should touch on that because you know, I, I think you should apologize to me. You know. Oh, you're going to be one of those callers, are you? Go ahead. For what, you're not, you're not for right. what you, I'm a conservative, you know. If you don't like it, Sarah Palin's going to call in an airstrike, baby. You know, <laughs> I'll, I'll say, you know, or Michelle Bachman, you know. the tea par- See, I quit the Tea Party. I used to be the cadre of the Tea Party out in this area, but I quit. You know why? Because they just, they just didn't fear God. They were afraid to publish No King But King Jesus on their literature instead of just Don't Tread On Me Only. It's, they need to include Don't, you know, they need to include No King But King Jesus. How do you free staters expect to stay free and, you know, to stay out of jail and have all these miracles happen without Jesus Christ? Because what you're talking about is a miracle. The freedom that we lost happened because of our sin, and it's going to take a miracle to get it back. So the only one that can give that is Jesus Christ. So how do you expect to get it without Jesus Christ? Um, Okay, so first off, I think that uh, small government does not include uh, a big government apparatus for killing people. It's a, a killing people is a very big state power, and so growing that particular state power isn't a definition of small government. Secondly, if you're claiming that there was more freedom at the founding of the United States, I would point out to you that there were people who were non-Christians that founded the United States. Ben Franklin, Thomas lie. Jefferson. Um, it's, it's not a lie. It's all you have to do is go look at uh, history books and find out what a deist is. That's a damnable lie. They weren't deists. <laughs> they were from the Church of England. Thirty-two of the original signers were Episcopalian. I mean, haven't you ever read the uh, the farewell address of Washington? Haven't you ever looked at the inscription on his coffin? Haven't you ever looked at all the state's preambles? Don't tell me they're a deist. You damn liberals. You rewrote all this stuff because you want to say we weren't. Right, a, I'm a liberal. I've been a Republican all my whole life. I'm a liberal. Um, okay. Hey. Look, I'm I kick just, you in the nuts. Well, well no, you won't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, I am. I'm going to kick you in the nuts. 
Okay. That's a threat. That's not very nice. Yeah. Um, I don't care. You know, you're a bunch of, uh, you know, you know, it's crazy. You wanted to start a riot in the pumpkin patch. I know it wasn't you, but what do you think that's going to do? Why don't you arm yourself like Guy Fawkes, your hero, and why don't you say enough of this? You're always pointing at somebody else. Guy Fawkes is they're not very, my hero. Guy Fox was violent. Just, uh, Guy Fox blew up a building. You've got a that... Guy Fox mask hanging on the wall. I here. don't find that heroic. Just because of a mask uh, doesn't mean anything. You could have a Jason Voorhees mask. Doesn't mean you support murder. I got one of those. You know, it's a ski mask because, see, you know what? If you're if you're uh, in a little unit of uh, gorillas, if you have to protect your house and your property, last resort. You don't want them to see your face. You block your eyes. You block all that. It'll look you know, bad. Pete, well, uh, there was a recent post on the uh, one of our forums uh, where a listener says that he thinks you're a troll, that you're not real. Oh, so I'm the CIA. Well, you know what? That, that listener, you know what? He, he's going he's gonna to be one of the 95% that gets that fire and brimstone rain on him, baby. What you're kind just, of God? Wait. I mean, do you believe that your God's a loving God? You're darn right. Part of justice is love. What you can't of- have justice... You can't have mercy without justice. If the state doesn't you do what like God a really wants, they're going to be judged. Like, Part of like, justice is love. Part of love is nut kicking. <laughs> oh, come on. You can't have mercy without justice. How do you say, I love you, if you're not willing to stick up for what's right? Come on, don't give me that. That's my action. Well, no? Where I, are you right now? There's a lot of noise in the background. It's his family. I'm in public among a bunch of idiots and zombies. That's where I'm at. Excuse me. I think, he's real. I think he's oh, real. Oh, I think he's absolutely real. There are plenty yeah. of nuts like this in the world. I mean, oh, oh, pretty, oh yeah, you, you look in the mirror, pal. You don't know what reality <laughs> is. You know what? Anything outside of the Bible is a lie from hell, including your, your political theories. How the hell do you expect you're going to? You're going to make things happen without Jesus Christ, huh? Well, I don't so know that the Bible, and, that much right. I don't know that the Bible and Jesus Christ are really related. Thanks for the call, Pete. And I, I, don't, I don't also, I don't think it would necessarily be a miracle for the Free State Project to succeed in, in what, what they're doing. No, because it's just numbers. The, the history tells me from the time of the Assyrians to now, we've been getting more and more individual freedom, more and more decentralization. And that's just what I expect the future to hold for us. I've always been optimistic long term. There could be hiccups now and then, but but I think that what's happening here in New Hampshire is 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 the is the result is the natural result of a thousand years of history. So I, I, it wouldn't be a miracle. Well, John Gray, you say you expect uh, more freedom to come about, more individual freedom, but. I mean, don't you think that the political system changing is is part and parcel to that process? No, I think uh, the political system is lying politicians, mm-hmm. and then vo- and, and and then the great masses, the voters, who think that that all they have to do is vote to change the world, and neither of those two two components is correct. So I, I think politics is nothing more than than a, an echo of what's already happening in the world. I don't think that politics, politicians, echo. or voters drive affairs in the world. They just react to them. Well, they drive affairs to some extent. So, for instance, uh, marijuana has been legalized recreationally in Washington and Colorado. Has Correct. that not driven change? Certainly pot smokers drove, and, and people that support pot smokers, drove the change to make it legal. But hasn't mm-hmm. the change to make it legal driven change beyond that? Well, let me, let me restate. I... It, wasn't quite right what i said before the voters they don't they don't drive anything politicians and bureaucrats they make change happen they Mm -hmm. drive things they'll throw you in jail but if you think that you can change the world by going and flipping a switch in a polling place you're wrong you got to do you got to do more than that you have to take real action you have to confront you have to confront a bureaucrat when they are robbing you by the side of the road even if it's nothing more than telling them hey buddy when are you going to get a job when are you going to stop living off the backs of your neighbors? When are you going to stop robbing people by the side of the road? Well, I, agree with you. I agree with you, Johnny Ray, that those things are all important. And I think voting is useless. Well, I mean, not if it elects people who are freedom-oriented. I mean, if you had, you've got in New Hampshire, you've got 400 state reps. And that is, I believe, the largest legislative body in the United States besides Washington, D.C.? That's that correct. correct. And the largest in the English-speaking world besides the House of Commons and the U.S. House of Representatives and the 
fourth largest in the world, excluding whatever that German thing is called. We've had as many as a dozen liberty activists, like Free State Project participants, not even just liberty folks. There's more liberty people, but just Free State Project participants, people who've moved here to get active for freedom. We've had as many of a dozen of them in there at once. I think there's around 11 of them uh, right now. This next election, maybe we'll hold that number. I'm hoping at the very least we can hold at 12, perhaps maybe even get a few more. But if we could have 24 or, you know, two dozen state reps in there who are straight up voluntarists, anarchists, principled libertarians, that couldn't be a bad thing for the political system, right, Johnny Ray? No, it couldn't be bad. It, it does. It's not necessarily a bad thing to have libertarians in office, but I just think that if there's a situation where there's a majority of politicians, libertarian politicians, it's because the battle's already won. Kay Oliver is part of the Toyambe Women's Group in Jinja, Uganda. She gets old clothes, fixes them up, washes them, and then sells them at the Jinja market. She was quite happy with her success at her business, but realized that a sewing machine would really help her make more money to take care of her two kids. Free Talk Live helped her get that sewing machine. You can help us help more people by getting your coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com. Make a difference, one cup at a time. Get a free pound, try out the subscription, cancel at any time, coffee.freetalklive.com. The event you've been waiting for is here. Lumber Liquidators, third annual fall flooring yard sale. It's your chance to get first quality, full warranty direct from the mill flooring at unbelievable closeout prices. Like oak laminate for an incredible 19 cents a square foot. And pre-finished three-quarter inch solid maple for just $149. Plus beautiful bamboo for 63% less than other stores. Take advantage of our 20 years of savings with 20-month special financing. And get even more unheard of flooring deals in our stores. Fall flooring yard sale is Thursday through Monday only. Visit LumberLiquidators.com to find a store near you. Radio is the most personal of mediums. I exist right now in your head. If you listen to Free Talk Live regularly, you know me. Free Talk Live is on more than 160 radio stations around the U.S. and has been downloaded on every continent around the world. Hundreds of thousands of listeners with ad packages from $600 a month to $6,000 a month. Imagine what we can do for your business, project, website, or idea. Email me, mark at freetalklive.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene and the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Tuesday, November 4th, 2014. Silver is trading at $16 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,169 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $330. Antiwar.com reports Ukrainian President Petro Poroshenko has threatened to withdraw his government from a truce with Eastern secessionist rebels a day after the Easterners held an election for leaders of their breakaway republic. Poroshenko insisted that the election was a flagrant violation of the agreement and claimed to have already held talks with the defense ministry about the prospects of restarting the civil war. The war wasn't going particularly well for the Ukrainian government at the time the truce was reached as the rebels had launched a counter offensive chasing them out of the key portions of the territory of the Donetsk and Luhansk Oblast. The rebel vote is expected to install Alexander Zakharshenko as the new president of the People's Republic of Donetsk. Zakharshenko is a leader of the rebel movement already and an advocate of outright secession from Ukraine, saying he believes the Donetsk region could become a wealthy energy exporter along the lines of the United Arab Emirates. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Roberts and Roberts Brokerage. For over 35 years, Roberts and Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment grade precious metals. They now take Bitcoin for purchasing precious metals so you can turn your profits into a long term investment. Call Roberts and Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing. 800 874 9760. 
The Washington Post reports when voters take to the polls today, they'll do more than elect representatives to pass laws on their behalf. They'll do some policymaking of their own. Across 41 states and the District of Columbia, voters will weigh in on 147 ballot measures on issues ranging from minimum wage to marijuana legalization to the labeling of genetically modified foods to gun policy to taking on $18 billion in debt. If all 147 ballot measures are approved, two states and the District of Columbia will legalize cannabis for recreational use. Two states will require genetically modified foods to carry labels indicating that fact. Gambling and gaming will be restricted in some states and allowed in others. Georgia will cap its income tax. And the state of Washington will simultaneously, paradoxically, both ban and require firearm background checks. Of course, not all measures will be approved. Nearly one quarter of the questions on this year's ballot are citizen-led initiatives a policy-making tool with roughly a two-in-five historical chance of passing, according to data compiled by the Initiative and Referendum Institute at the University of Southern California. Among the measures before voters, voters in Oregon, Alaska, and Washington, D.C. will vote on different forms of cannabis legalization, as voters in Colorado and Washington famously did in 2012. Floridians will consider legalizing medical marijuana. Polling so far suggests there are no clear winners on those questions. Louisiana will will allow voters to weigh in on 14 issues directly this year, more than any other state. New Mexico and North Dakota are tied for second with eight questions each, including a controversial amendment to the North Dakota Constitution that would extend rights to the unborn. Maine, Oregon, and Rhode Island will each pose seven questions to voters. ExpressCoin is the best choice for buying Bitcoin, Litecoin, Dogecoin, and more. ExpressCoin prides themselves on their customer service, so much so that the back end on the website should allow them to be even more focused on your needs. Get your cryptocurrencies with money order, check, wire transfer, or cash deposit. Get started at expresscoin.fppradio.com. That's expresscoin.fppradio.com. Reuters reports Venezuelan President Nicolas Maduro announced on Monday a 15% increase in the minimum wage starting in December to protect workers from inflation of more than 60%. Maduro blamed soaring consumer prices on an economic war launched by foes of his socialist government, frequently accusing business executives of price gouging, hoarding, and speculating. Critics, though, say Venezuela's endemic inflation problem is evidence of the failure of the 15 years of socialist economic under Maduro and his late predecessor, Hugo Chavez. In the last data available, Venezuela's annualized inflation rate reached 63.4% in August, with consumer prices rising by 3.9% that month, according to the central bank. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. This is the Onion Week in Review. Pushed to the breaking point after constantly being taken to task without ever hearing a word of thanks for what it does around here, an overwhelmed and infuriated nation announced Wednesday that it was trying, okay? Jesus Christ. A poll of the American populace revealed that 33% felt they were doing pretty damn well, all things considered, while another 28% just wanted two measly minutes without somebody breathing down their damn neck. A group of female friends spent a raucous night on the town Thursday validating the living shit out of each other. You're the most talented person I know. Eyewitness reports say the women absolutely went to town on a session of non-judgmental reassurances. Last night was crazy. I don't even remember half the uplifting things I said to Karen. We've always been the kind of group that listens hard and consoles even harder. And in other news, a group of semester at sea students steal an anchor for their dorm room. A five-year-old wants to be an overworked Haitian nanny when he grows up. And every group of friends at a karaoke bar ruins every other group's night. This is the Onion News Network. Free Talk Live. Take control of the airwaves toll free. You may do so at 855 450 free. That's 855 450 3733. And you can join us online at freetalklive.com. Join us on the phones or via Skype. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. It, of course, is election day in the United States. And a lot of people seem to think that that really matters in some way, shape, or form. Certainly, it won't matter. 
for the most part, whether the Republicans or Democrats win wherever you live because, well, odds are good they all want to control you and tell you how to live your life. But every now and then there's some ballot measures that might make a difference, and there's actually a few legalization measures that are on the ballot. Apparently Washington, D.C., Alaska, and some other place I'm spacing out on. Was it Oregon? I forget what the other one was. But uh, one of there's no, one. Florida's other one. got a medical. Florida's medical, yeah. And then uh, so those are always interesting to watch. So this Guam. Guam won medical one in Guam. We've got the results there. Um, so you know, interesting to hear those results. You're welcome to share them with us as you know more at eight fifty five four fifty three. With you in the studio tonight, it's Ian here, Johnny Ray, and Mark. Now Johnny Ray, uh, the, the kind of the key anti voter. Uh, person on the show here on Free Talk Live. We do tend to get into it a few times a year, at least on this program, over whether or not uh, people should vote. You, Johnny Ray, you will not participate in the voting system. But in some cases, now we don't have this in New Hampshire, but in some places they have uh, they have these ballot measures. Now, Mark, don't they do things like that in towns, though? Like, can't can't townspeople do something in some places in New Hampshire to put stuff on on the ballot? I think they have to be put on by the select. Men. Okay. Is that something that can be proposed at like a town yes. meeting or something? So you as a town's person could propose something at a town meeting? And I don't think it, you could just do it at a town meeting, no? but you might be able to try. I mean, I don't know. Like for some reason, anywhere. I thought I heard something about that in New Hampshire, but I don't live in a town, so I don't know what the political system is like out there. Um, in the cities, that doesn't exist at all. But and you do have measures. No. No, there's uh, there's the warrant articles I've in the voted school on, boards. Okay, I voted on measures of some sort. Those are the, well in the school board elections they have those, but not in city elections. Most of the your taxes go to the school, so they're pretty important. Okay, well what what I meant was like ballot measures, like also you know, there legalizing was that warrant, marijuana. Or the whatever. warrant article to sell that one building. So no, you're wrong. That's a school board thing. Okay. Yep. So they have those with the school board, but they don't have them uh, with the cities in New Hampshire. It's all decided by the politicians. But in some places, you know, like Florida, they're looking at legalization of medical cannabis. That's on the ballot. Uh, that could mean that fewer people are put in prison cells as a result of having possession of, of a plant. And, you know, to me, even if you don't care about the politicians, voting on those ballot measures is a, is a way, a tangible way to express how you think things should change in a place, Johnny, right? I mean, don't you, won't you at least give the voters that one? Not no, Ian, but hell no. Let's say there was a there was a ballot there was some kind of uh, I'm sorry, what are they called? Ballot again? measure. A yeah, ballot measure that was to to uh, legalize the recreational use of marijuana here. And there is not in New Hampshire, but in other places. Well, let's say there today. was in New Hampshire. Mm-hmm. I, I would feel like me going to vote for that me going to participate in that would would be me also recognizing that the state of new hampshire has the right to prevent me from smoking marijuana if the if the votes don't come up in my favor why would you think that because why because because i'm lending credence to the the process by participating in it how do you lend credence to the process because i'm spending my valuable time i'm giving my valuable time to the process you'll give your valuable time to the jail cell if they'd find you with the marijuana too well is doing the jail sentence uh giving credence to the system no no no, because, because it sounds like it. I mean, you know, there you are standing in their jail cell. You're not walking through the bars or anything. Because that's involuntary. It's involuntary, Mark. So is I... the result of the vi- the vote once it's made. Right, but voting, but but voting and participating, it it lends credence not only because no, I'm no, spending no, no. my. No, no, no. I've asked you to prove that, and you can't just keep repeating it as though it is true. Then you're just another Democrat or Republican. Well, I, I did prove it when I said that my spending time on it, my demonstrating that it's worth my time going to the polls lends the whole the whole affair legitimacy. I don't think that it okay, I don't In know what your legitimacy mind it does. I right? don't know what legitimacy means. I know that the result of the vote whether it is a true result or just something that somebody made up, um, is going to be how uh, the government reacts to it. And that's what I've seen over and over again. So, you know, I mean, in Colorado and in Washington, the police don't arrest you for recreational marijuana, but in New Hampshire they do. And And that's more a function of the police in New York or wherever growing up 
in the culture that they grew up in, sure. my generation realizes that marijuana is not the devil that generations prior to me did. It's well, not because of the law. The law has changed because we have changed as a people. The law didn't change us. We changed the law, but not well, in won't. a legal, not in a legal way. Well, well, wait. Look, I'm Johnny, Johnny Ray. I'm with you in that the law won't change until the people change. Right? You have to be the change you wish to see in the world. If you want more peace, you have to find it inside yourself. So I agree that external changes manifest after internal change happens. I think there's no doubt about that. But at some point, someone decided to change the law. At some point, you know, things got to the the level where the politicians felt it was safe enough politically for them to go ahead and make this change. They felt as though that's what people wanted. And one of the ways that politicians can get feedback on that is through these these ballot measures. And I, you know, while you can say that it grants legitimacy to the system to vote, I think that can be true in your mind. But the system doesn't care whether or not you vote. The, the system does not care whether or not I vote. I right. think that's absolutely right. If I vote, so it doesn't grant it the doesn't legitimacy matter. It outside does, of your head. Well, yeah, but uh, my point now is it doesn't matter who votes and how you vote. The voter doesn't matter. The person counting the votes matter. I have no faith that my vote is going to be recorded properly. Th that's a fair thing to say, right? Like to say that there's been plenty of evidence, that there have been some voting, voter fraud out there, the voting machines have back doors in them, there's been you yeah, know, But I don't voting. go for that. Okay, for one, um, in New Hampshire, most ball ballots are paper, from what I've been able to see. And secondly, if, they've uh, been lost, if they've been they, the anti-pot people, didn't want pot to be legal, then why is it legal? in Colorado and Washington. I don't know what life was like in Colorado and Washington before these laws were passed, but I think it's very plausible that the police weren't arresting people that much oh, yeah, they were. for the pot then oh, yeah, anyway. No, 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 no. The numbers from uh, Washington State are, I think it went down from like 7,000 arrests to next to nothing. Since the since the change happened, I have yet to hear a good defense of this whole "I'm not going to vote" thing. Stephanie uh, Murphy, our son, one of our our Sunday hosts. You have. You're just you, you've you've heard it, Mark. You just refuse to. <laughs> I, I I've debated Stefan Molyneux on this it's one. It's not I've debated though, I mean, you, you've, on this you've one. admitted already that you've just admitted now that 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 you can't be sure your vote is going to be recorded accurately. Did you agree with me there? Absolutely So agree. why, so how, how is it that I haven't just taken your head and physically put it through the basketball goal? Why is it that it's legal in Colorado and Washington? Is it just that they wanted to experiment, they that hate pot want to experiment in two states you're not in to, uh, to see? Well, they've just probably shifted the profits from from less politically connected people to politically connected people. You really, you think the cops are less politically connected in Colorado and Washington than the rest of the states? Because that's where who's taken the hit when it comes to funding with uh, legalized marijuana. Mm, yeah, that's a it's, good point. These are just places where people can vote in referendums. Now, I can get where the, uh, you know, the, the principled libertarian says, I'm not going to vote for a politician because politicians, um, no person can properly represent me. But I will never understand why somebody says, I'm not going to vote in a referendum or you know a ballot measure or a warrant article or whatever these things are when you're talking about voting yes or no when you vote no i don't want more government for somebody that doesn't legitimize government it doesn't legitimize the process it's just saying it no it does legitimize the process look if you say, if you say to somebody who's uh who's uh, punching you, please don't punch me again. You haven't legitimized the previous punches or the punches that come after that. We'll come back with more here in moments. 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Take control of the airwaves here on Free Talk Live. There is more coming up. And also, join us via Skype. Our Skype username here is LRN.FM. Do you live with stress? If you have nervousness or common everyday anxiety, we're looking for you. Because right now we're sending risk-free supplies of a fast-acting supplement to listeners of this station. You heard right. Every listener who calls right now will learn how to get a risk-free bottle of Stress Block, a naturally derived formula that promotes feelings of calmness, alertness, and focus in just moments. 
Supplies for this risk-free offer are limited, so don't wait. Stress Block is a fast-acting, non-prescription formula to support relaxation without causing drowsiness. Your nervousness is guaranteed to begin fading like magic in just minutes. This special risk-free offer is for listeners of this station, but it won't last. Call us now for this exclusive Stress Block risk-free offer. To get your risk-free supply of Stress Block, call 1-800-481-1288. That's 1-800-481-1288. 1-800-481-1288. On the average, Americans work between 45 to 50 years hoping to build up enough wealth to retire and live out their golden years. Unfortunately, with taxation, the rising cost of food, energy, housing, and medical, many retirees are forced to live below the poverty line. Is this a flaw free enterprise, or is our monetary unit we call the Federal Reserve Note forcing us into perpetual debt, ensuring inflation and higher taxes? These questions and more can be answered by reading G. Edward Griffin's book, The Creature from Jekyll Island. Congressman Ron Paul states it's what every American needs to know about central bank power. A gripping adventure into the secret world of international banking cartel. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. I will give a silver dollar from the early 1900s to anyone who purchases this book. Call 1-800-686-2237 and order a copy today. It's critical that the public be made aware of the system. Call and order your copy today at 1-800-686-2237. That's 1-800-686-2237. CEO Jeff Potkel went berserk earlier this morning, becoming drenched in his own blood and the blood of several employees as he viciously demanded the staff produce more web video content where he would quote f***ing kill them all. We need more videos! Videos with bands! Random videos! Funny videos! I want a video with a celebrity! I don't give a shit which one! You think this is funny? <laughs> I'll show you funny! <laughs> threw our office manager's body against the door and then told us that nobody could leave unless we came up with three original video ideas. Then he made us watch as he bit his own tongue in half. People don't wanna read, they want videos. They wanna sit at work and watch videos. Videos need to go viral. Viral, viral, viral. This is the Onion News Network. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. When I found the Free State Project, I knew it was the key to achieving liberty in my lifetime. It's awesome to be surrounded by like-minded, freedom-loving activists who've moved here to New Hampshire. From politics to civil disobedience, we have it all. Where I came from, it felt that no matter what I did, liberty was dying. Perhaps you feel the same way? Call 888-377-2515 now to learn more about the Free State Project. That's 888-377-2515 or visit freestateproject.org. You can sign up to receive the latest about the Liberty Radio Network via our email updates at updates.lrn.fm. That's updates.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You're invited to take control of the airwaves toll free at 855 450 free. That's 855 855- Four five zero three seven three three with you tonight in studio. You've got Ian here, Johnny Ray, and Mark. And don't forget to join us online at freetalklive.com. Plus, if you need some uh, legal forms, legalzoom.com can help you out. Yeah, if you're thinking about starting a business, uh, it's probably a good idea to incorporate at legalzoom.com. Incorporation can help protect you against frivolous lawsuits that could wipe you out. Legalzoom.com is fast and easy, and they do all kinds of legal documents, patents, wills, trademarks. Use code FTL when you check out to save $10 on your order. LegalZoom.com. 
Coupon code FTL. We're going to go to your phone calls and thoughts. Coming up, Mark, you've got an email that you wanted to share about religious or how you've been kind of handling Christian callers or something like that. I haven't read the email, so you wanted to share that with us. Yeah, somebody's less than happy with how I'm doing things. Pull that up, and then, Johnny Ray, I know you've got a game of the week that you wanted to uh, discuss this week as well. That's all on the way. Our toll-free number tonight is 855-450-FREE. But first, Nathan is in Texas via Skype. Nathan, you're on Free Talk Live. Hey, guys. Um, you brought up the issue of narcissism and sociopathy earlier, and I wanted to chime in and uh, and uh, point out that really great onion spot that you have uh, playing on LRN. And which one is that? Uh, it's the one from Whitest Kids You Know, where the guy says, I have a special kind of sociopathic narcissism that makes yes. me oh, yeah. think Clint, I know what's Clint best. Clint Webb. That is uh, not an onion commercial. That is, as you identified correctly, the oh, whitest right. kids you know, but it uh, it mostly uh, most of our sort of parody uh, news things on LRN.FM and the FTL streams are from the Onion, um, so I can understand the confusion. But yeah, that's that is very funny commercial, and people who want to see the full uh, version of that can just search for whitest kids you know Clint Webb on YouTube, and you'll see the the full version. I had to cut it down from its full length to to be a minute long. Yeah, you're pretty good at cutting uh, those onion spots up, or the, the, sorry, the, wide, the widest kids you know spots up. Um, I don't know if we'll be hearing any new onion spots soon, but uh, yeah, that's definitely a great, great one to check out. And uh, when you read that list about narcissistic qualities, there was one item on that list that stood out to me. Um, if you recall, there was one about uh, demanding or requiring um, like praise or admiration from others. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you recall? Yeah. Yep. Well. For the longest time, that confused me about narcissism because if you have an elevated sense of self-worth, then why do you need people to prop up your sense of self-worth, right? Good question. Like if you if you have this grandiose kind of sense of you know I'm you know I am the powerful you know whatever in the universe. Sure. You know, why would what the little it, people think matter to you? Right. So there's this guy on YouTube called Sam Vakden, and he has a whole bunch of videos about narcissism and books and all that kind of stuff. But um, he basically has this argument that uh, narcissism is not actually um, an excess of personal esteem, but a deficiency. Yeah. And mm -hmm. his reasoning behind this is that uh, the narcissistic personality where the person's demanding praise and exalting themselves is kind of a it's, it's like a fake or a front. Uh, built on top of the real personality, which is the opposite, which is low self-esteem, which considers the self to be worthless and, uh, you know, d not deserving of human interaction and that kind of thing. Mm. And so from that perspective, the narcissist's behavior makes perfect sense. They're trying to deny the, their true self. And in order to do that, they need constant or they need a constant influx of praise and, uh, you know, whatnot from other people. Interesting analysis. Yeah, uh, so I think that, uh, and I've I've looked at the same issue, but um, and I think that there's something to that for some personalities. Um, at the same time, I think that when you're talking about an inflated sense of self worth, uh, that really worth is only defined by what people how, what people value and how they value it. Right. Like gold is worth something because lots of people want it, not because you or I necessarily want to wear um, jewelry, but because, you know, some people do. And therefore, to define self-worth, um, even the narcissist knows that hasn't studied this, knows that it has to come from other people. So I don't know that I entirely agree with this. You know what I mean? Uh I'm not, I'm not sure I'm following it. It sounds like you said you you agree with the analysis. Well, I kind of – I don't know that I agree with the analysis. I am confused on the analysis. Um, it's because I think that self-worth has to, by its nature, worth has to come from outside of you. So when you say self-worth, that there's – I don't think this person exists that actually generates self-worth. Um, they – you know, that they – uh, that they're confident, that they're in, in and of themselves, they feel great value um, to what they say, that they don't care if other people really agree with them, that that person, I, I just, I can't imagine that person existing, that worth has to be defined by other people. Interesting. Um, that's not, that's not how I view psychology, because it, it always seems to me that there's a, there's like a balance where it's the way you view yourself and then that's influenced by the way others see you, and then it kind of meshes together in your actual personality. I've never heard that perspective before. 
Nathan, thanks for your call and thoughts tonight. I do appreciate it. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Mark, let's jump into your email. It's not uncommon for people who consider themselves of the Christian persuasion to be upset with you, Mark, on the air. This isn't the first time uh, that you've had feedback from somebody saying that they thought you've been a bad boy or something like that uh, well, usually, in usually handled things well usually what they get what we get on on free talk live and, and i'm probably the most vocal because i'm you're I, jaded I, you you got butt hurt by the the whole christian process i think that's absolutely true but also i'm just sort of more educated in christianity than you are yeah. so i tend to pick it apart more mm-hmm. um, like i know about the bible you you're just kind of of the came to the opinion someday that you know like i just don't believe this stuff i'm learning in vacation bible school i shan't believe it well and, i mean i went to christian church for a long time but i never read the whole bible yeah but i don't think that it affected you in the same way you didn't immerse it you weren't immersed no my parents were never like they were never the kind of christians who went every single week they didn't have Bible tracks all around the house. Like I, I remember going to friends' houses and Johnny Ray. I don't know if you shared any of this experience, but I remember going to, every now and then I'd go to a friend's house and you know there'd be like a Bible passage hanging on the wall of the bathroom. You know they they just had Bible-y things all over the place. I didn't have that family growing up. What about you, Johnny Ray? My grand my grandparents' house. My grandmother and grandfather on on my dad's side was definitely like that down in North Carolina. Mm, okay. And um, what about your parents though? Mm, no, not so much, and not growing up in my own house. My mm-hmm. my dad was a Baptist, but he wasn't so, you know, too jazzed about it. Did he my, go weekly? My, no, we we didn't really go unless we were visiting my grandparents in uh, yeah. in 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 Burlington. Every we'd we'd have sort of jags or spurts, I guess, where we'd be going to church for a little bit, I'm, for I'm, a little bit, but it didn't, it never lasted. Yeah, I think that's a, I think that's like one of the first indicators as to how religious a family is, is how often they actually attend the church services. So, uh, Mark, were you, what about your parents? I mean, were they? Like you that? Know, I, my, I don't know that my mom was ever really sort of uh, totally immersed. I mean, she was a Sunday school teacher, but I think she did it because that's c- the kind of thing you did when you had a kid who was in Sunday school. So you 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 contributed. Mm-hmm. I don't think she ever took it as she she ever took it as seriously as I took it. Like I was told, mm. look, if you don't believe this stuff, you're going to be tortured for all of eternity. That's a pretty serious thing. Like it's worse than anything that can happen on this planet. Were you going weekly to church? Uh, yeah, I went weekly to church, and I was uh, also. I know you went to a church school for Christian a while. school for nine years. Did they have, did they have services years. at that school as well? It's a Christian school. The whole thing was a service. All right, we'll come back with more here in moments. You can take control here on Free Talk Live. Get the email outs next. Are you ready to surrender your right to buy body armor? No joke. Congress is now trying to outlaw civilian body armor. And if House Bill H.R. 5344 becomes law, you can kiss your right to protect yourself against rifle bullets goodbye. Don't put off your body armor purchase any longer. Go now to InfidelBodyArmor.com. Thousands of military veterans trust their lives to Infidel Body Armor. You should too. Spelled I-N-F-I-D-E-L. Infidel Body Armor. Just won't quit. Hi, I'm Sam Nussbaum, WellPoint's Chief Medical Officer. We proudly support the March of Dimes mission to improve the health of babies and fight premature birth. We're helping the March of Dimes fund breakthroughs in research and community programs that help more moms have full-term pregnancies and healthy babies. Join us in working together to provide children with a healthier start in life. Visit marchofdimes.org. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keen. Keen is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keen. Keen is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. 
This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Lil Drums. Every bit as fun as a full-size Nestle drumstick cone and definitely cuter. Visit us at drumstick.com. Vacations are all about family time, but you don't have to leave home to have fun. Take one weekend a month and devote it to family activities. Pull out the board games and puzzles, serve up some treats, or have a picnic. Even without leaving home, you'll feel like you've really had some time away. For more tips like these, visit us at parenthood.com slash yourfamilytoday. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click Get Notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. Uh, excuse me, is this where I get a license to start a new business? I wouldn't be hasty. You have to get a license to go out of business, too, you know. Oh, well, look, I've invented this little anti-gravity machine, see? Oh, is that why you're walking two inches above the floor? <laughs> oh, yes, it's it's very comfortable. It saves shoe leather. Yeah, well, you have to fill out these forms and report to the Human Services Department of Manpower Orientation and register with the Fair Employment Practice Commission, just the Wage wanna... and Hour Division of the Employment Standards Administration, the State Sales and Income Tax Division, the Internal Revenue Service, look, and the I Social Security Administration li- of the Department of Health, Education, and Welfare. And, of course, OSHA. OSHA? I thought that was a little town in Wisconsin. You'll find out. Say, floating around like that could be dangerous. Have you checked with the Consumer Product Safety Commission? Well, not yet. Come to think of it, you actually are flying, aren't you? Look, you need to go over to the Federal Aviation Administration and the Transportation... It's very hard to get anything done these days if you're in business. But Free Enterprise built this country. Think what could happen if we don't keep it free. A public service of this station and the Center for the Defense of Free Enterprise, Bellevue, Washington. We just can't have people floating about unregulated, you know. What's up next? Visit the Liberty Radio Network program guide to find out at shows.lrn.fm. That's shows.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up anything you want. You can also email uh, the host of the show, although emails are not the best way to get in. Uh, to get on the air. However, we are going to share one with you here, Mark. You have one that someone is upset yet again with how you've handled interactions with Christians or the perspective from which you're coming. We haven't actually read this, so I don't really know what it says. I don't want to be cavalier with it. I think that uh, the critique has come on a pretty regular basis. I don't think you're being cavalier with it. I think you're taking it, you know, seriously. No, I think you are. Uh, Just the tone. Somebody is upset with you, you know, that kind of thing. So, Well, it's not a surprise to me. I mean, I think that some people kind of get their panties in a wad a little bit too much unnecessarily. I don't think that... uh, I don't think that you've treated people in a rude manner who've called in with Christian beliefs. I mean, you certainly Well, are... when P- Pugnacious Pete calls in, I'm pretty rude. And that's what this is about. This is about Pugnacious Pete? He's well, not a, like a real Christian. He's a joke. I know, right? Like, that's really the, the issue is, is that I try to rebut him, and in the process, I... You know, have things to say about the Bible. Hmm. I am not fond of the Bible as a, as a uh, religious text. Uh, absolutely not. It's a tough read. Well, it's not the read. It's it's the way it was compiled. It was the the politics behind it. Mm. The Bible. Jesus didn't hand us the Bible, right? The Bible was compiled m- more than two hundred years after his death by a vote of church leaders, people that disagreed on the 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 deity, the the, the demigodness, the 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 person of uh, of Jesus, of who he was, and that the. You know, these books were altered over time, um, you know, like all kinds of things. I'm I'm upset with the Bible. I'm generally not upset with Christianity if you understand the term Christianity as I understand it. But I, I do see how this person's upset and he feels like I'm alienating Christians with my talk of uh, Christianity. And he feels that essentially that— uh, Well, the Christians alienated you in the first place. Well, I got kicked out of my church when I was uh, 16 or 17, yeah. So uh, let's get into the email here. I, I'm not tr- trying to say I don't take it seriously. It's just that it's a common critique. This isn't an unheard of thing for someone to say. And when you first presented this to me as something you wanted to talk about tonight, you know, my response was to kind of roll my eyes like, okay, here we go again. What's new? I mean, I don't feel like you've been rude to the average Christian, to, you know, just any old Christian who calls into the show. Yeah, you're challenging. 
uh, yeah, you don't believe their dogma necessarily, but I guess I don't know what he wants. So let's jump into it. Right. It's coming from Cody. Um, I've been a longtime listener. I go through uh, I, I go through FTL every time I buy anything online. I've signed up for the Free State Project. Um, I've noticed that you guys have been speaking more and more anti-Christian, anti-Jesus. I am not anti-Christian, and I'm not anti-Jesus. I am. Um, I I have a real problem with Christianity as it exists today. I, I, there's a lot of Christians I really like out there. I mean, there's people within the liberty movement who are Christians, who are very devoted Christians. I just voted for one today, Varen Swearingen, the president of the Free State Project. He's was running for state rep. He didn't win. Uh, but, you know, you can't win as a Republican in Keene, basically. I go have dinner at Varen's house. Yeah. We almost never talk about uh, his religion or mine. Hmm. It's just a. It's just something we stay off of. Yeah, that doesn't mean that, you know, uh, look, just because you have legitimate critiques of the Christian The mass Christian religion, the organized religion that is Christianity, doesn't mean that there's anything inherently wrong. Most Christians have critiques of that uh, organized religion. Most of them do. Well, well, one version of it or another. Right. So, I mean, you know, there's that. Anyway, going on. I think uh, it's fine to speak about your doubts, disappointments uh, about Christians, etc. But during the October 29th, 2014 episode, you went as far as calling the Bible a stupid old book of laws. (laughs) It's not stupid to me. I love liberty. There's more and more Christians becoming libertarians with the exception of your and anti-Christian and anti-Jesus rants. I love your show. For a long time, when you'd trash the Bible or Jesus, I'd just turn the show off um, and uh, tune back in the next day. But you've become so much more insulting about the Bible and the Bible bashing recently. I've stopped listening, listening as much. It makes me sad because I used to love your show so much. And please work on not showing your hate for the Bible and Jesus so much on the air. I love everything else about your show. And I actually wrote Cody back because I think that this is really important. Uh, First off, I corrected the name Jesus because I think this is a real problem with Christianity today. I call Christianity a translation of a translation. And that's because if you say I've got to believe on your holy name in order to be saved— but you get the name wrong, because Jesus' name isn't Jesus, it's Jeheshua, then I think there's a, a fundamental problem. Now, you may, you as the Christian may not think that, but I do. And consider that your fair and just God, if you believe mainstream Christianity, is going to send me to burn in hell for all of eternity because I believe that there's a problem with his book where they mistranslate the name of the, the Savior. Savior. Like, mm. I have that problem. You don't have to have that problem. The question is... God, is he fair and just for sending me to burn in hell for not believing? Because I have that problem. And I have a variety of other problems, but that one in and of itself I think is sufficient. Well, you know, I wouldn't call the Bible a stupid book, but I would call it a boring book. Um, But you called it apparently a a stupid book. Look at the results. I mean, look how it's held us back. Look how religion has been used to control people. Um, I mean, people people say that a relationship with God is defined on this book. And I say in and of itself, if you can't have a relationship with God that's defined on your relationship with him, you don't have a relationship if your relationship flows through the Bible. Hmm. You've got some belief system. And, uh, you know, God is going to, if, if God wants to reveal himself to you, he's going to reveal himself to you in whatever way he's going to do that. It has nothing to do with his book. I think his book is a filter through, this, this book, excuse me, is a filter through which we see God. And that is, that, that is a, a real detriment. Now, mm-hmm. I don't hate Christians, and I only dislike Christianity as it exists today. Obviously, I've got a real problem with the Bible, but... Most of the, most Christians haven't spent any time studying how the Bible became the Bible. They don't understand that there were two groups of people, one that believed that Jesus was the Messiah, the other believed that he was the Christ. No, they they just, used these terms interchangeably. They just believed what they were told in church and that this was the Word of God, and there it is on paper. The Bible's clear that there were other Messiahs at the time of Jesus. People claimed that they were going to deliver Jerusalem from the rule of the pagans. Jesus, essentially, Christianity did that. Jesus delivered on that promise. Jesus is the Messiah, as far as I am concerned. He is, however, not the Christ, which is, to me, a, a, What's the a, difference? a term, one's, one's Greek, one's um, Hebrew, but I think that they mean different things to people. Um, like, Jesus believed he was the Messiah. He would have never used the term Christ. 
uh, the Bible, the New Testament, is written in Greek, and this is in, in and of itself a bastardization. Paul, who's supposed to be a Pharisee, but was working for the Sadducees, who were at each other's throats, going out and apparently trying to kill people in uh, you know, other lands that aren't even Jewish, which doesn't make any sense, he couldn't write in Hebrew. That proves that he wasn't a Pharisee, mm. because he wrote in Greek. He mishmashed a bunch of other savior religions together and created this idea that Jesus was God. Jesus didn't believe that. That's my belief system. And, uh, you know, I mean, if it's upsetting to people, I don't know what to do about it. Yeah, that's it's frustrating. Uh, because people call in about religion all the time on the show. Am I supposed to shut up? Because I disagree with them. Oh, we've got to, I've got to massage the liberty message so mm. that more people can understand. I'm sorry if Christians can't handle my opinion. Well, I love listening to you, Mark, when people call in talking about it. Now, Ian is a different story, though, because it seems to me that when a person calls up and self-identifies as a Christian, it's almost like a switch gets turned in Ian Freeman, and suddenly this person is very is suspect, and whatever he has to say is suspect. What do you mean by that? Suspect. What are you talking about? I wish I, I wish I had a recent example to give you, but it's like you get very short with people, and you don't keep them— well, I suspect, I guess, that they're not. You just real turn Christians. against them whenever somebody says calls in and says, "Hey, my, I'm, I'm, I'm John, and um, and I'm a Christian." And then you're that's well, if you've that's got all to identify, you. if you have to identify as a Christian, like there's almost a problem at that point, uh -huh. right? Well, like you're supposed to be known by the, your fruits. And if your fruits are, we got to hang yeah. the gays. Like, Pete, and, you're not a Christian. Yeah. You're a nut. And God did say that you're supposed to keep your Christianity in the closet. No, he's, he's supposed to say no, it's really talking about your uh, piety and your and your giving uh, in, in your we'll charity. We'll come back with more here in moments. But, you know, somebody claiming to be a Christian just begs to be called out. We're coming up. Here's a good idea. When you have a legal matter like creating your will or legally setting up a business with a corporation or LLC, you don't necessarily need a law firm. Use LegalZoom.com. At LegalZoom.com, you answer straightforward questions online, and they take care of the rest. They even review your answers for common mistakes and guarantee your satisfaction. Free Talk Live listeners, you'll get 10% off your order by typing in FTL in the referral box at purchase. Don't procrastinate with these important legal documents. LegalZoom.com. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. TalkLive.com. Hi, folks. Ronnie McMullen here for Life Change Tea. Healthcare is a problem, whether you're for or against Obamacare. It's a mess. My question is, who do you trust? Do you want to be told what to do, or do you want to make your own decision? My opinion: preventative maintenance. Keeping your colon clean is preventative maintenance. A little exercise, a balanced diet, and drinking Life Change Tea. It tastes great, and it helps with constipation high cholesterol, liver problems, acid reflux, and much, much more. And with the holiday season upon us, you can get some extra tea for free. Don't wait for Obama. Make your own decision. Order now. Call us at 928-308-0408. That's 928-308-0408. Or you can log on to getthetea.com. That's getthetea.com. Ridding yourself of harmful toxins is truly preventative maintenance. Get the tea.com. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. 
DVD available now at GunsAndWeed.com or on Amazon. That's GunsAndWeed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's GunsAndWeed.com. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at LRN.FM? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at LRN.FM. That's LRN.FM. Are you a political activist who does things that the government might not like? Then this free ebook may save your life. RATS is your guide to protecting yourself against snitches, informers, informants, agents provocateur, narcs, finks, and similar vermin. RATS was written by OG libertarian Claire Wolf. RATS is a short book, easy to read, and available free in many formats. Download RATS free at rats-nosnitch.com. That's rats-nosnitch.com. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, and you can bring up anything toll-free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. And join us via Skype at Skype username. LRN.FM with you in the studio tonight. You've got Ian here. Johnny Ray. And Mark. And Mark, you're sharing with us an email from a listener. He is a devout Christian. He's upset over some of the things that you've said. You said the Bible was a stupid book. Yeah, stupid one old point. book. Stupid old book. That upset him. And uh, mind you, Pen and Teller will do, uh, Penn will do the same thing, as did Neil Bortz. And these are pretty successful libertarians. Broadcast. Oh, no doubt. No yeah. doubt. I don't think that anybody is, is impugning your ability to be a successful broadcaster. He's just saying it hurts him when you say things like that. Well, right? I think we've had enough Christians over the years say things like, essentially, you could do more for the message of liberty if you were softer on people's religious beliefs. So pandering is what he's asking you to do? Is to, I don't you know, know that he's... Yeah, well, I mean, he's he's telling me Cut his experience. Cut it back, back it down, back it off a little bit. I guess that's what my question is. I'm going to read what I um, responded to him, but I want to know from the audience, mm. really. I want to know because I want to be the best broadcaster uh, I can be, and the message of liberty is far more important to me than the message of religion. Uh, as far as you know, who, how you, how you relate to God, that's not that important to me. Um, I'm passionate about it. Because I believe what I believe, probably in the same way that just about everybody listening to me believes what they believe. And it's all different, by the way. Mm -hmm. uh, but if I just kept my mouth shut on that issue, is that what is that what the audience wants from me? Shut up on religion. Do the liberty thing. You're a liberty talk show host. Well, I can tell you that as the sort of the programming side of the show, that's not what I want from you. I mean, I want a, I want talk show hosts to be true to themselves. Uh, you, how you can know. you do anything else, really, is what my thought process well, is. Well, how you can do anything else would be to pander based on what you think the audience wants. That's I think how I, you do something else. Yep. Yeah, I, I think one can massage what one says in certain ways, and I can work on it. But, um, you know, I, I, I just wonder. Let me read my, what I right. had to say to him. Cody, I don't y hate Yeshua. I think he must have been a pretty awesome dude. I don't think he's any more the son of God than I am, but that doesn't mean I hate him. I think it's obvious that the Bible is not the unerring word of God. There's much about it, up to including the mistranslation of Yeshua's name into Jesus uh, and the prescription that I believe in that unerring name. I believe that Yeshua was, is the Messiah. I believe he delivered Israel from the rule of the pagans. That's all that a Messiah was supposed to do at that time, um, according to the, the Jews. I believe the Bible is a cobbled together mess that has inevitably brought Christians to where they are today. Christianity today is, at best, a bunch of misled folks that believe falsehoods that they've taught their children, and at worst, Satanism. Hmm. Um, my whole life was immersed in Christianity and the Bible. The Bible has some good stuff in it, but religion always has 
and has always has been used to control and enslave. Now, note, I don't say Christianity has always been used to control yeah. and enslave. I say religion has, because this is this is a problem worldwide. Religion, organized religion, tends to be bonds that hold people. It tends to be social conservatism. It tends to be a way to shame, a way to harm people. And I don't find a lot of value in that. Now, you believe it's true, then what do you do, right? Like, it's the truth. That's your truth in the world, and you have to operate by that truth. But that's what, but mine is mine. So going on, hate has its own set of chains, and I've tried really hard to set myself free. But the truth is, I love God, and I hate the Bible. So that's how I ended it with him. And I just, you know... I, I don't know what to do with this. What do you this. think, Johnny Ray? What should Mark do? Should he change how he approaches things to pander to the Christians listening uh, to the radio? Obviously not, Ian. That's stupid. Why would you even suggest such a thing? I'm not suggesting it. I was asking you. Um, what do you think? Certainly not. And also, I think that uh, religion, or I'll say the church and the state, have kind of some of the same... A lot of the same characteristics. I this think, is true. I think they prey upon a lot of the same weaknesses that people have, and I think the church and state are really sort of manifestations of of the same the same thing. Like man's desire to control man? Exactly. Yeah, I think so as well. Um, your thoughts are certainly welcome. I don't think you should change how you feel, Mark. I mean, you are who you are. You've had the experience you've had. When you do get... Nasty. I try to keep you in check to some extent. Like you know, hey, calm down, settle down. You know, there's no no need to insult people. I don't feel the same strong level of uh, distaste. I think that uh, that you do. You haven't had the and harm in your life. Um, like I feel a great deal of shame mm-hmm. when I went to prison. I really threw myself into this religion thing. I want you to understand that there was a night. There were more than one night in prison where I believe that if I did like Paul and uh, Silas and I, um, you know, went to the prison guards and I said release me now in the name of Jesus <laughs> that they were going to do that now imagine for a second because this is oh, what it says in the bible funny. right like they they stood as dead men um uh, hmm. now imagine for a second I'll the shame that. that you might feel if you as a thinking logical individual believed that and like I feel a great deal of shame around that, um, mm. and I feel a lot of shame around sort of the way I acted and the the the, the holiness end of uh, of of the uh, uh, type of religion. Holiness is a, a vo- version of Pentecostalism, and you know the speaking in tongues, the kind of bobbing around. I did all this stuff, and this was while you were in prison. Yeah, and it's That's embarrassing. Well, I was scared, man. Mm-hmm. I just wanted to. I, I was facing a 25 year sentence, and nothing else was going to get me out of jail. Right. Like there were people that got out of jail in the 60s and 70s by acting Christian and stuff. And Mm. a lot of people tried it. Jailhouse religion, they call it. And there's no doubt that I caught it. And that makes, you know, it feels disingenuous to me. Yeah. And like it's all wrapped in there. Mm. You know, I was a I went from. Christian as a kid to an atheist, and then when I got into to prison, I you know full fledged Christian Found again. God all of a sudden, and then you know things you know it's not so bad after a couple of years. I'm like eh, whatever, and I just sort of <laughs> believe whatever I believe at that point and uh, develop my own uh, beliefs in God or whatever. But uh, yeah, I, I have a, a lot of shame around it, and that comes out when. Uh, you know, people push the right buttons. Barry is in West Virginia listening to WVTS. Barry, you're on Free Talk Live. How you doing, fellas? Barry, go ahead, sir. Yeah, I love the uh, discussion, and I think the young man should uh, voice his opinion. Uh, He sounds very intelligent. He sounds uh, like a likable guy. Uh, He's high-strung sometimes, but (laughs) that's fine. Uh, I think what I'm hearing is I don't hear the true message of faith, and that's love. You have to have love. Yeah, I think I should push that more because I agree with you on that. Yeah, no doubt about it. And also, I think that should, that should apply to the Christians out there who are finding themselves offended uh, by some of the things that Mark says. Try practicing your forgiveness with Mark. Well, um, you you can offend anybody at any time. If you call a talk show host, well, you 
you better come prepared because you may get offended. There's a good I mean, chance of that. <laughs> Barry, good yeah. call, man. Thanks for making it tonight. Right. I do appreciate hearing from you. i got to say something offensive about Barry. <laughs> uh, Johnny Ray, I know you had the game of the week, and uh, I don't want to give you short shrift, but that's what you're going to get here tonight. This was a continuation of one from last week, right? Yeah, it just started it last week. It's called Dungeon of the Endless by Amplitude Studios, and it's really, really a a fantastic game. Where'd you buy it? Steam? I got it from Steam. I think I bought the Founders Pack, which is sort of a special, I really like this game, so I'm going to pay a little more. Dungeon of the Endless. It's a dungeon hack. <laughs> it's a... Constantly it's, fighting enemies, that kind of thing. It's it's a tower defense RPG, turn-based, uh, um, oh, wow. roguelike. Oh, wow. Some of your favorites. Roguelike. It's you love a, the tower defense RPG thing it's got this great like risk reward trade-off so what is a tower defense rpg there's tower defense there's rpg I, apparently this is a tower what defense is a tower RPG? defense rpg well this okay there's there's 12 levels you're trying to escape from the bottom of a 12 level dungeon and each level has got between 10 and 30 rooms okay so you're you've got a squad of of at most four heroes each of them the that have widely varying abilities. and The elf is eating all the food. <laughs> it, it looks a bit like Gauntlet. Oh, wow. <laughs> um, but as you uncover, your first job is to locate the exit. And then you, and then when you find, when you locate the exit, you take your power source, you pick that up, and you bring it to the, to the exit. So as you uncover the map, you're doing it slowly, and every time you open a door, that op unlocks a new turn, and some beasts oh. might be conjured. So you put modules in there. You build modules in the rooms to kill the monsters that come towards you. And like you're also defense. leveling up your heroes like an RPG Interesting. and giving now, them new abilities. You said there's 12 stuff. levels to the dungeon? Uh, yes. How Was it worth levels, the money? How many levels you through? De absolutely. I have beat the game on the too easy setting. All right. You going back through it? Yes, at easy. We'll hear more about it uh, maybe next week if you'd like to discuss that. Then more on the way tomorrow night online. In the meantime, freetalklive.com. Have you? Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here. And I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. If you want to move to the free state And you're looking for some real estate Well, I know a guy who's really great It's the realtor Mark Warden Do you want a home with 20 acres A lakeside cabin Any takers for renters Buyers and sellers too Mark Warden is the guy for you PorcupineRealEstate.com Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. The live edition of Peace News Now is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network, LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty News and activist updates. Online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Tuesday, November 4th, 2014. Gold is trading around $1,171, silver around $16.07, and Bitcoin is trading around $324. 
Today's Bitcoin price brought to you by ExpressCoin, the fastest and most reliable way to buy Bitcoin. Buy Bitcoin today at ExpressCoin.com. Today's edition of Liberty Beat is brought to you by our newest sponsor, eFoods Direct. Redefining the way you think about storable food. Easy to make and great tasting with a shelf life of over 25 years. To celebrate our new partnership, eFoods Direct is offering Liberty Beat listeners 10% off their purchases. To take advantage of this exciting offer, call 800-620-5520 and mention coupon code Liberty Beat. To learn more or buy online, visit eFoodsDirect.com. In the news, on Monday, the United States Air Force fired Colonel Carl Jones, who supervised over 150 intercontinental nuclear missiles at the Warren base in Wyoming. According to Stars and Stripes, the causes for Jones' firing are supposedly tied to his manipulation of and cruelty towards subordinates. This incident comes within only one year of the firing of General Michael Carey, the man who oversaw all intercontinental missiles in the United States. Colonel Carl Jones was discharged from his nuclear supervision duties, but retains a job with the service. Jones has been reassigned as a special assistant to the new commander. Beginning today, the Electronic Frontier Foundation will attempt to convince a judge that the National Security Agency should not be allowed to collect and store phone records of millions of Americans. The EFF and the American Civil Liberties Union will present arguments in the case of Clayman versus Obama. Following the disclosures by whistleblower Edward Snowden regarding the NSA's collection of phone records, lawyer Larry Clayman sued the federal government and won a preliminary injunction in the case. Now the EFF must convince a judge that the data collection violates the Fourth Amendment. The group Women Against War has launched a campaign called Ground the Drones in Albany, New York. The campaign involves the Drones Quilt program and a performance play called Grounded, which is being performed at local theaters. For the quilt project, the women created quilts that recognize civilian drone victims in Pakistan, Afghanistan, Somalia, and Yemen. Support for Liberty Beat comes from Central Texas Gunworks, your online source for firearms, firearm accessories, and ammunition. They take major credit cards and now accept Bitcoin. Visit them online, shop.centraltexasgunworks.com. Support comes from Marjorie Wildcraft's Grow Your Own Groceries, homegrown food on every table. That's growyourowngroceries.org. This is the Liberty Beat for Tuesday, November 4th, 2014. Check out the website at thelibertybeat.com and like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash thelibertybeat. The UK government is set to release documents related to a secret policy which details the government's legal basis for intercepting typically legally protected communications between lawyers and their clients. The documents will be released as part of a case being heard at the Investigatory Powers Tribunal, an agency that deals with complaints against intelligence services. The criteria the government uses to determine what information is not privileged is currently unknown. Although the information will not be released publicly, it will be revealed through the trial for the media to report on. Today, voters in Colorado and Oregon will decide whether or not to label genetically modified organisms. Former Ohio Congressman Dennis Kucinich stated that he supports the state's efforts to give consumers the ability to know what's in their food. Large corporations have been pouring millions of dollars into the efforts to oppose the labeling of GMOs. If the states pass the measures, they would join Vermont in the fight for labeling. Earlier this year, Vermont passed a labeling law and was immediately sued by major food producers seeking to overturn the bill. A young woman who moved to Oregon to take advantage of the state's assisted suicide law took lethal drugs prescribed by a doctor and has died. That word from a spokesman on Sunday. 29-year-old Brittany Maynard was diagnosed with brain cancer on New Year's Day and was later given six months to live. Support for Liberty Beat comes from Midas Resources Incorporated helping clients to convert their paper 401ks and IRAs to solid gold and silver. Get their 10 Reasons book free by calling 800-686-2237. That number again, 800-686-2237. This is the Liberty Beat for Tuesday, November 4th, 2014. Check out the website at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan reporting. Reminding you, spread liberty with a smile. Officials for the Centers for Disease Contraction and Preservation held a press conference urging all Americans to suck on as many doorknobs as possible. This flu season, the Center for Disease Contraction is recommending that all Americans, regardless of age 